start it and All right, I start okay. it. So go ahead and refresh it. Okay, let me do that. I guess I should do the same thing, right? Yeah, I'm doing the same. <laughs> just to, it, This may not be doing anything, but uh, it feels right. It feels right. It says right. we're live. Oh, yeah. yeah, got it. All right. <laughs> and welcome, everyone, to the Mechanics Institute on this Tuesday evening. I'm Abel Talamantes, the chess director of the Mechanics Institute. And I have with me FIDE Master Paul Whitehead, and Women International Master, Dr. Alexi Root. How's it going? Good, thanks I'm for hanging that. in there, Abel. Perfect. You know, uh, we're, we're in lockdown here. Um, I know, we just got re-locked down. Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah. that's right, you're in Texas. So you're, yeah, you're Not right. in Texas. We are free to go out and catch COVID if the, we the, want. The funny thing is, is like we've done, for the most part, like everything like any public official could possibly ask for us and then you know we get hammered again <laughs> with a lockdown so i'm wondering we shouldn't have probably opened at all but um i was uh i noticed that um one of the, there was uh the new york epidemic in 1918 um I decided to look up and see what was uh, if there was any chess going on in New York at the time, and there was. There was a big Capa Blanca was playing in a tournament during the height of the epidemic. Yeah, was in that, New York. I wonder what that was like. Was Capa Blanca all masked up and uh, sanitizing his hands <laughs> nonstop? Yeah. It's a, a twenty thousand people died in New York, which was a very high percentage. Um, yeah, relative. Uh, relative the to the population yeah. and there was Capablanca, blanca and you know what the most one of the most famous games of chess was played in that tournament um during the epidemic um which was uh marshall springing the marshall attack on Capablanca blanca and Capablanca <laughs> blanca refuting it um very cool uh over the board we may have to uh include that in uh coming newsletter or something Call it uh, pandemic that. chess, pandemic mm -hmm. chess, <laughs> epidemic and epidemic pandemic chess. I think, uh, Paul, you know, I really enjoyed your Lombardi article in the last newsletter, and I think you should write an article about what you're talking about right now. I think, yeah, you should. well, I don't feel like I'm a, a, a scholar, but I might, I might, um, uh, well, there have been some great games played during the um pandemic. But they're all this uh, uh, online stuff. I mean, back then, Cup of Blanca and Marshall were real men. You know, they met probably maskless over the board. So I don't know what the circumstances were. Paul but it's and, remarkable. and Alexi, uh, what is going on in this game that we have up, which is our board oh, yeah. one? Oh yeah, yeah, chess between. Uh, oh my goodness! Gadir. It looks like Gadir is really uh, causing Black some pain right now. Yeah, he's taking on Christian Clemens. Yeah. I, you know, our mechanics players are not representing, uh, and we need to have a, <laughs> a, a, a chat, a little chat about that. A heart to heart. Maybe maybe offer a seminar how to beat the deer. And, 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 well, and this is I, what happened here. Gadir is having it really easy in this tournament. So, so far, far, so far he is. I know it could change. Uh, okay, I see where that knight f7 is going to come in. First, the bishop sacrifice. This well, is you're getting this a good. Is, two, I mean, you're getting a really good two pawns for it, though. Well, it looks like it's going to probably be worse than that, huh? Like, okay, so the queen moves. And now queen h5 and knight h6 check? That's just There's devastating. Bad things happening. And so, I mean, Gadir's like spending, what, 15 minutes per round? Yeah, yeah. he's he's actually... Uh, so far. Uh, Christian, Christian needs to... You, you're playing a grandmaster. You better have your opening yeah, <laughs> locked up fair. tight. I'm yeah. sorry. And he's usually yeah. a pretty solid... He, he actually played Gadir tough in uh, one of the previous That's games. right. Yeah. Gadir is totally prepared for it. Here comes knight h6 yeah. check and resign yeah. time. Yeah, and just like that, here it is. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, I guess he's going to 
finish the game with less time than he started it, but it was close there for a second. And there it is, night each six. And in the chat, in the chat, we have Big Man saying, "I'm the best but youngest chess player in my school." Congratulations! Uh, congratulations! Random, random, <laughs> probably <laughs> pretty, true. Pretty random comment, but uh, I guess congratulations. <laughs> Sometimes people need a little reinforcement. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> Are you Paul skeptical? <laughs> well, you know, I I've come to believe. Well, there's, yeah, there's all kinds of things. The truth is on the chessboard. And look at this. This is uh, Felix German and Elliot Winslow. Wow, oh, yeah. Elliot. Oh my goodness. Look at this, a modern day brilliancy. Yeah. Feel That's it. what this looks like. Looks Incredible. Like there must have been a peace sacrifice. We've missed some yeah. beautiful, a rook sacrifice. A rook sacrifice. Yeah. Well, no, uh, exchange. An exchange. The right king is just getting murdered here. Yuck. We're going to do uh, the king march. I mean, king c4, I just pawn takes pawn check and rook c8 check would finish the game. Do you, think, do you think the king's going to come forward, Paul? You don't think it's going to try to retreat? Well, if king d2, queen takes b2, check. Oh, uh, yeah, that's pretty yucky also. Yeah. I think Felix is about, is this is uh, resignable. This looks maybe, like a trap that. from the king's <laughs> Indian. Maybe Elliot and Gadir are competing for who can finish their game first. Yeah, yeah. like uh, getting a quick... Uh, Felix is a strong player, but his his openings are are risky, very risky. He plays he uh, he needs to sort of just calm down a little bit, and and um, play a game of chess that starts out more of a, on an equal basis. When he plays these strong players, he gets he can get caught in the opening, and that's not he's, you're not able to recover in those kind of situations. Look at that. Now this is uh, now this is no good. Um, well, Elliot's going to be the exchange down, but with a virulent attack. <laughs> virulent, yeah. We should always. But I mean, it's true. Like Felix is not player. over. It's not um, over yet. So, let's see. Pawn takes pawn check. You must I mean, pawn takes knight check, rather. Yeah, I was like, I don't see a pawn there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, right. just quickly checking in on uh, the other game. This is uh, where we're at now uh, with Gadir's game. Look at that. He, he doesn't even take the rook with check. That's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole rook hanging with check, and he plays rook e4. Now, that's restraint right there. <laughs> I mean, you can't take the bishop because then the rook will take the rook with check. With, with yeah, mate and two. Oh, Chris. Oh, Christian. Makes me want to hide my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. I know this kind of thing can happen to any of us. You know, we have to take the lessons to heart, though. You know, yeah. Our, our openings are, we're vulnerable in the opening, especially to strong players who are really booked up. Right, and, that's true. You know, um, so we have to lock down on our opening openings as much as possible. So now what's the material like? What's well, this is- For each side and uh, I it's guess- It's a bishop and a knight for a rook. Okay, okay. But White's king is stuck in the rookie eight now or something. It's just look, oh, I see. The queens are, yeah, maybe that's not the right move, rookie eight. I mean, even any, even the end game is going to be better for black, but possibly, if I'm Elliot, I want, I don't want to trade queens you here. You want to keep the queens on? Okay. Yeah, the king's in the middle. Mm -hmm. You should be able to finish him off. Mm -hmm. Even if you have to make a move with the queen, you know. And uh, Gadir did close the show with. Uh, wow! There you in go. record time, like how, how long? How long are we into the round? Uh, I mean, round started at six thirty. So, uh, and it's game in thirty-five. 
Game 35 plus two, so. Yeah. But, yeah, Gia's played all his games in like under five minutes. Yeah, or yeah. I know. So far. <laughs> well, you got to make your, you know, you're trying to work for a living, right? You want to make as much per hour as you can. <laughs> right. Now he's got time to give a lesson or yeah, something. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, give, give a quick lesson, yep. get that hourly rate up. <laughs> yep. And this is uh, National Master Eric Hahn against Akko Hidari. Now, Akko is a good, a, a good example of somebody who, in a way, the opposite is true. His openings are nice, but uh, he tends to maybe make some mistakes later on in the game. Mm. That So it's interesting. P players have oh, wow. weak strengths. And, and uh, Judith is letting me know that uh, Andrew Ballantyne upset uh, David Flores. Oh, good for Andrew. Yeah, let me Andrew. let me find that game if I can. So I'm gonna have to go to this. No, I, I mean Andrew's been around for a long time. It's finally time for him, even though he's a youngster. It's time for him to make a little push. David Forrest is not unbeatable. Um, he makes a lot of moves in a short period of time, and uh, that can work to. Oh, that's advantage. right. You were telling me about David that he plays everything super fast. So fast, and uh, David is an interesting character. I've got. I know him pretty well. Um, uh, oh. He, he, oh, look at that! Look at that. Coaches. Bishop. Yeah. That was a piece hang there. And, and look at one of the, and look at the time. Thirty-four minutes. Like he's just. Yeah. yeah. He just hung the piece. Yeah. Right. Well, David's David's got things to do. He's a family man. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, doesn't have a lot of time for chess, probably, but he's an incredible natural talent. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's he learned he learned chess later on, like in his twenties or something, oh, wow. and immediately became an A player or something. And, or, and, uh, and he's beaten uh, Ethan Boldy and other two thousand level players, so he has the talent for it, but. He moves so fast. He that never some, studies. Yeah. Yeah, he gets caught sometimes. So, but congratulations to Andrew Ballantyne for yeah taking advantage of the Schooling opportunity. Him. Schooling him. And uh, let's go to uh, this game, which uh, which I thought would be one of the games to watch in the round. This is Nicholas Wang against National Master Arun Dixit. All right, Nicholas likes to attack, but this position is a little bit, hmm. And uh, Rune seems to be up upon. Yeah, and his position's pretty safe, so White has to kind of try to find something. Um, try to yeah, find something. Black's probably doing pretty well here, right, Paul? Um, it looks like it. It looks mm -hmm. like it. Nicholas has is a good attacker though, so yeah, um, you know. Oh, hey, Elliot's joining us. He must have won. Hi, Elliot. Congrats. Hey, Elliot. Yeah, yeah. Excellent, excellent. Nice game against uh, Felix. And here we have uh, National Master Kirit Panuganti against Javier Silva. And you should get Elliot to come on here. Yeah, Elliot, join up. Yeah, Felix has to get rid of some. That's what I said. His openings are suspect. He's a good player. Um, let's see. Oh, he needs a Zoom link, Abel. He's um, willing to. I am working on it right now. All right, Elliot. This is exciting. We're going to be in the same room for the first time in how many years? Willie, you guys haven't been on Zoom together. I don't think we've been really. On Zoom I've watched, I, I, I used to be in the in-person, I would watch Elliot in the background of the, you know, your office. You should well, come to the chess cafe, Alexi. I should. Yeah, you should come, attend the chess cafe. Elliot's on there. So, uh -huh. It's Mondays at four. All right, good to know. And it's an hour and a half with Nick DeFermian, Paul Whitehead. <laughs> Yay, favorite people. Uh, um, Elliot Winslow, Michael Walter joins in. 
Very cool. And we have Kyron Griffith against Vishva. Well, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, a, I'm technically not a mechanics member. I'm sort of a mechanics anger on, a groupie fan You're kind of person. A super but fan. If super you send me, yeah, if you send me a link to it, uh, I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> okay. All right. There we go. Oops, oops, oops. So what is Elliot going on about, that hack Richard? Um, well, Richard, there's, there's certain people that join the... Um, the, uh, this is an interesting game. Can we stop for a second here? Sure. This end game is is quite interesting here. Black's going to double on the e file, maybe, and then White can play rook a three, I think. And if rook e four check, king f three, White seems to be hanging well there. I mean, White has to do something to defend the e-pawn. I guess there's a few options for defending it. I mean, Rook a3 is certainly one of those options. Rook a3 is the move. But then what does White do if Black just passes with pawn to b6 then, or something Then how about like Rook a3 to d3 to try to attack a pawn, Paul? How about that? Then White will be able to play Rook. Black will be able to play Rook e4 check, King f3. Rook takes e3 check if you play Rook takes d6. No, no, I didn't say I'd take it. I'm just lining up to take it. Rook a3 to d3, just like. Right, yeah. right. Well, then, black, like I said, if black passes. Yeah. Oh, you're saying I run out, I'm zigzagged? Well, if, if white run? takes the pawn on d6, black can play rook e4 check, king f3, rook takes e3 check, rook takes e3. Oh, black does this. In okay. What? I guess I guess Kyron is a pawn up. Are you saying it's going to be enough here, or not? I'm not sure. Yeah. We're just going to have to see. I'm I'm yet to see a complete road to black equality. I'm not seeing it yet. Oh, okay. And I sent uh, Elliot the link, so we're just waiting for him to King F right. join cool. us. King Elliot, yay! King F three. Too long four. since he's got enough. I mean, all rook and pawn endings are drawn, but I don't see yet exactly what black is going with this. You know, I am sure that a Kyron, I'm assuming Kyron's the higher rated player, so I'm sure he's going to keep uh, Oh, pressing. yeah, he's notoriously presses on until you make a mistake. And uh, we've seen him win a lot of games that way. Just yes, put the pressure, I, keep the pressure. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, so if rook d3, how does white make any progress after, say, pawn to b6? Uh, I don't see how white can get, get anywhere. Oh, hey, Evan. Evan is, Raven is in hey, the chat. Hey, Premier so. Chess. Evan, Evan. Hey, Elliot. Hey, Premier Chess. Yeah. Now, how does white make and, progress if black plays pawn b6? And just make sure you LA, mute. You have to mute your twitch. What do we have to turn down? Twitch. Your twitch. Mute your twitch. Stop twitching. What do we have to turn down? Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm sure I'll do that then. Stop twitching. <laughs> okay, how's that? That's yeah, good. Perfect. If we, if we don't hear anything, that's good. So, yeah. Congratulations. Uh, big win against a uh, tough opponent. Big win, tough opponent. <laughs> now, oh, I hear it through Zoom. Yes, that's right. Yes, you hear it through Zoom. And then <laughs> the Twitch, it's like a slight delay, like you have a why? bad TV or something. Now, why is there a delay? Is that so that, that we can be vetted or that uh, <laughs> it's just so can it, 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 accommodate polls? It, Paul's ancient internet, or it, it just is. Uh, if you just uh, talk through the Zoom and watch in Twitch, you, you'll think everything is fine. Oh, I see. Yeah, That's Abel's cool. Abel's real, like a magician handling this. Actually, I don't know about that, but uh, <laughs> no, it's true. I make it look good. You deal with the delay and everything. You know, you know exactly how to make it seamless. I have to like pause myself. Uh huh. So what do you think, yeah, Elliot? So Does uh, Kyron going to break through? I and black plays king g6. Well, he's up a pawn. That's a rather uh, yeah. considerable fact. He can put his rook on b2 and play c5. Oh, no, he can't. 
Yeah, that's a good question. What does he do? He's actually got a little bit of a problem here. That's what, yeah, that's the, the clever plan Black had here, the, or the, th the thought that Black had. So okay, I have a fix? dumb question. I have a dumb question. Why can't we just do something like a C5 and run our beef on? I think that's what you're yeah, going to have to do, but that's not going to be. That's not going to be enough for a win here, I don't think. Try again. I think it might be. So C5, really? what do you do, Mr. Not, I'll, not I'll take with the D pawn, I suppose. I'll take back. Go figure. Oh, All right. yeah. I'll, I'll just take hey, it. Hey, wait. Elliot, you might not even want to take back. How about if you – can you play D5? No, D5 is stoppable, and then he's got to protect okay. the just pawn. So – oh, he played it. Okay. Yeah, so now we can – All right, so what – I don't – See that this is so incredibly special, but maybe it is. Okay, um, so take 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 rook b two c four c b six c three ooh b seven uh oh. How now do you, you do don't want to let white queen. I mean, I suppose. Well, yes, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, uh, it's all happening. Oh, what's wait, happening? You what's putting the rook on the oh, on maybe that, the wrong side. That surprises this, me. Well, king g seven. Okay, so rook, rook, uh, somewhere it's rook c6. I hope he's not. I hope that wasn't a mistake because rook b2 yeah. looked pretty nasty. I'm surprised he didn't play rook b2. Me too. But maybe he's thinking he can pick b2. up b2. <laughs> and there it goes. I know they make yeah, fast moves with all this time left. I don't yeah, understand it. I don't understand it. The, to me, it looks like this is a, a one of the most precise. You, you, would you want to see Smyslov blitzing off his moves here? I mean, this is nuts. Well, his, it, it, what he's done is, is, a, is a plausible uh, sequence because taking an F5, the rook will hang. He's got to do something with that. But what about, and if rook B4, rook takes C5. Five, right. But I, then king G6. And then king up or F6. Oh, I guess rook C6 and B6 then? Yeah, but. But then the king comes up again. Oh, king to E5. Yeah, that's annoying. That is annoying. Most annoying. In fact, then Black's got his tricks. It's too bad we didn't get a chance to look at your rook b2 move a little bit more closely. It's not like a win to me. I you know what? I bet it will be analyzed in the mechanics newsletter that comes out every Saturday. Only if the game is. Offered I'd rather for, see for silliness. Uh, get uh -oh, go. crushes his fifty. <laughs> but he went to g6. He may, I think g6 is a mistake because he doesn't have king e5 now. Right. Of course, rook h6, I don't know what that would lead to. Well, then rook check and king e4, and black's uh, making life uncomfortable for white. But now, now he's just passive, and this is just, this has got to be good for uh, for white. Now he's going to, but well, actually, even even here, it's not going to be so easy. So what if, uh, if, well, I don't know, how does black pass? Is it black's move? Yes, king f7. King h7. Okay, either, well, then I have rook f6. And then I have rook b5. Okay, I'll, yeah. I, no, rook f6, rook Wait, b5. Wait, Elliot, king if rook f4. b5, king f4, right? Yeah, that's a problem. So I have to move a king. So king f7, or, okay, if king h7, rook f6, if king f7, rook h6. You, you heard the difference, right? <laughs> yes. So king f7, rook, I mean, king h7, can you, that king f7 seems like the way to go for me, because then you have. Maybe this is just lost. Or Maybe not, I don't know. Completely lost. If king f7, what are you going to do? Rook h6, king to g7, rook, oh, then I'm losing both pawns. And then it's rook No, eight, you're not, because you can go up to g6, and after rook g5 check, play king f6, and white, and white can't defend the b6 pawn. Uh huh. Good point. So, okay, okay king f7. Right. That's a famous endgame, g and h versus f. That's a draw, a dead draw, right? It was an article in Shakmari Bulletin in like the, I don't know, the 80s, <laughs> covering every which wrinkle of G and H versus F point. It was actually a, a good heavens. Again, it was like that's one of the game. most obvious of the draws, because the white king can't even go around on the other side. Yeah. So what does he do? What you going to do? Huh? Okay, so my question is, all right, so if king f7, but why don't just play rook c7 check and then pawn to b7? Because I go king f6, b7, king e5. Now oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Or for that matter, rook b3 check. I do have to worry about your king going to the... To the Into uh, g5, yeah, we do. No, the king would be on f6 then. 
So what about what if um, White plays King E3 here? Well, What's it's White's move, right? It's Black's move, rather. If King yeah. E7, oh, I see. Yeah, King E3. Well, that's too. You got to put the pawn on B7 first, or I take the G pawn and get back. I think. Yeah. So rook. Yeah, set. but get. But that's probably not good enough either. Well, that's let's look I'm at thinking. it. Maybe this is just a, an easy win. Well, king f7, king... rook c7, check, king f6, b7. So there's no time to take ever to take the g pawn, obviously. So what does black do? That could be a problem. Yeah, I think black is just busted here. Of course, you have no place to uh, hide, or do you? B8, up to you. Disconnect. Hmm. Well, the zoom's still working. But the switch is switching. King E3. Is it's Black's move. Okay, King F7. <laughs> I don't think it matters what Black's move or not. King F7, no, King E3. Okay, so I play your. Uh, well, now I play Rook B. No, then I play. Uh, oh, if, if I play Rook B3, check King F4, picks off the F1. Right, so. So you can't do that. Okay, so King back to G seven. What about King E seven? Who knows? Or back to G seven. King E seven, that's an interesting idea. <laughs> I'm more concerned about the other line. Rook, rook C seven check, King F six, B seven, King something, E six, and then King E three. Just bring the king to the queen side. That would be because uh, I I can't do nothing. Should I look on a computer? Is that not allowed? Oh, go. I'd rather you did. I don't think it's allowed. We need to use I'd it. I'd rather you didn't, but. One, two, three, four, five what? versus four. Oh, that's nine We're chess masters, Elliot. We're supposed to at least. <laughs> You're above a, this. You're above this stuff. This, you know? <laughs> I mean, you know. What are we? What what kind of example are we showing to the rest of the world? You know, we should invent the uh, du the Dunning Kruger table base. <laughs> it knows everything, or thinks it does. <laughs> That's what I think. I'd rather say I don't know, and then ask Abel to look. And if then we could let, look let's at move another on. Game. Yeah, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, we, can, we can look at a different game. They're gonna they're gonna finally use all their time. <laughs> yeah, check this game out oh, here. Move. Rook A4, that's not exactly... We're going gonna, okay. we're gonna, we're gonna to switch it up because <laughs> uh, we're, we're obsessing over one game. So uh, yeah. here's uh, Karit Panuganti and Javier Silva. Javier Silva's been up material, better, but... Uh, Whoa, where's that king think he's going? This is a looks like a, a nice attack for white, but... It's over. Queen H4, Jin. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, and Rook G1 check. No, yeah. Rook G1 mate. Yeah, Rook G1 May. That is it. Okay, nice. next. Fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. Let's. It's uh, so easy. Let's... We haven't looked at Mike's game yet. We haven't looked at Mike Walder's game. Oh, there it is. All right. Is this it? Where? What? I don't Mike see it. Walder. How come you see it, but I still see the previous game? Because you've, you've got a slow internet connection. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Mike certainly doesn't. He's got a new computer. His old one started jittering out. We're not talking bugs, jitterbug. And this is Mike Walder against uh, Holy cow, what is this Philip game? Gersoft. And Philip Gersoft won the under eighteen hundred in the last TNM, so Wait, you gotta think White's better here with the Gersoft. two bishops. Is that a German name? That I am not sure of. Guess but, uh, I mean Black does have a pawn, right? Extra pawn? Yeah, but look at the bishops. Yeah, White has the two ooh, 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 bishops. Two buzzers. That's true, and that B pawn can be picked off any time. Yeah, and even if, I mean, but on know. the other hand, it's true that there's that that it's not over yet, and um, but I like Mike's game here. I definitely like Michael's game. I'd rather be white here. Unfortunately, for well, actually, Rook D one does work. Look at that. Oh, to win a piece on D four. Yeah, but it might not be good enough. No, but that would take, be quite take, strong, right? Well, what you do is you play rook c4 right away. If knight takes d1 and then rook takes d1, you triple attack on d4, and that picks it off. But also there's danger of the back rank. Right. I see that. Yeah. Big danger. In fact, who knows how many pieces black wings, but it'll probably not be enough. 
but Rook D1, Rook A, let's say Rook FD, or Rook AD1, and then Rook C4 right away. Well, then well, you can play Rook takes G4. And Rook takes? Queen takes C3. And now you've got two piece, two bishops for a rook. You're right. They're, oh, rook D1 check. I don't, I don't know if that works or not. Or maybe it does because the queen, no, the queen doesn't. It's not anything. checked. I've got a rook on F1. Oh, you left the rook on D1. On F1, rather. Good point. Good point. Hmm. Sure. I like that we did it's not check in stereo, Paul. That was fun. <laughs> we know no check. For emphasis. Yeah. Always check it might or, be. As we used to say, that's no check. That's Cadillac. But probably nobody knows what we're talking about. Oh no, that's funny. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, Kavalak from Czechoslovakia. Not anymore, but in fact, I haven't heard from him for a long time. I hope he's doing okay. I'm gonna move over to uh, Eric Hahn, Micro Bear against uh, Akko Hidari. This is our board three. Wow, Akko is really, he's got a nice kind of gay looking I game. I have not seen it yet. What's going on here? Hey, you're, you're lagging. <laughs> can you share this? Can you, Abel? Can you share your screen in Zoom, or does that mess things up? You're gonna that would mess everything up. No, please don't do that, Elliot. <laughs> it's please happened. Please don't do that. It's happened before. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. But I'm. Not, I mean, I. Oh, there it is. Okay. I guess if I say the Eric Khan Brotherhood, especially nobody will know what I'm talking about. That one I don't know. I okay, did. There was a musician named Jerry Hahn. He was a jazz rock guitarist. And he had a three-person group. And it was actually quite amazing. H O N. No, H A N N. I confess. Oh, okay. And then he disappeared. And he sh You found some interviewer found him in, like Wichita, in, Can in the middle of Kansas, and uh, playing with a bass player and oh, no, it was yeah, with a bass player and an electric drummer. But this is back in like the late seventies. And uh, in the interview, he said, it's the best drummer in town. <laughs> <laughs> what do we think of this game here? Another story. Do we think I think black, is, black has a lot of chances here. This is, a, this is an interesting game. And I think uh, it's, a bishop's it looks to me like black is a little better here. I'm not worried about that bishop being lost because on bishop b4 you'll never get c5 in or will you? No, but you I can won't. just play something like queen d7 here. That looks G like a nice calm move. So I play bishop. Oh, that's taking away the square from the bishop. Not queen d7 again. kind of hunkers down a little bit. I know some people don't like the two bishops, but the prospect of some people don't like the two bishops. Who are these people? Well, don't. I mean, they don't like their opponents having two bishops. So <laughs> oh. <they're not> <laughs> That makes more but, sense. But, but look at, look at well, the thing about them, the two bishops, them, yeah. one mm -hmm. of the advantage, one of the advantages of the two bishops that people don't realize is that you can usually engineer one of the exchanges of one of those bishops advantageously. And that's where the one of the biggest advantages of owning the two bishops is, is that you usually are sort of in control of what exchange can happen after that with mm -hmm. and and um so maintaining a further advantage down the line because you have that extra option and often really? that that's what happens with a, a two bishop advantage it's exchange for another uh advantage let, let, let's go back to that game with kyron griffith and yeah yes, and uganda we'll see what happened oh wow we didn't predict this the rook to be on g4 did we well, Black's looking for a way to get counterplay Dude, after White again, tries seeing, to make a queen. I'm not seeing the board yet. What's going on here? There it is. Wow. Is it? Can't White, Black, oh, I guess if we play Rook G3, then. He's going to use the Rook to block the cover for the yeah. pawn, oh, right? He even gets that Why in. can't Black play Rook takes G3 check here? I guess King C2. Okay, well, I guess we're going to see why. Oh, no, there you go. It looks like it's lost for black. Yeah, it is. I think it was probably, Kyron, Kyron knew what, it, all along, I think, that this was, that this was what was going to happen. His I moves were quick. Well, maybe not exactly or, this, but he knew he was winning. Right, right. He's, so far, I haven't seen white make uh, any mistake in the, sort of execution here 
So what, King, uh, how does Black get out of this? Answer, no, he doesn't. That's it, it's over. Right. Just Rook B4 right here, right? Yeah, I think you're right, Abel. And then that's, uh, that's it. Rook B4, um, Rook back, B7. Yeah, that's the end of the that's game. That's it, it's Queens. Yeah. It's over. Very nice. No, Black's got a check to get back in time. Rook C6 check. Oh, you're right. Oh, very good. Okay, well, he's got to do that. Right. Okay, but but um, and then he's got to keep his king at g7. Okay, one one trick. <laughs> if rook c7 check, where do you go? Oh, you think that's what's going to be played here? Oh, but rook c6 will rook c6 rook b6 won't work. Rook c6. I was thinking on oh, rook yeah, c7 yeah. check, king h6, b7 rook b6, but then rook c6. <laughs> It's check, but so is Rook takes Rook. <laughs> yeah, very nice tactic. Very, very nice. nice. Very yeah. nice. It's funny the C six square is the is the thing here, but Everybody. so Black's found a way to sort of survive. The For question is, and someone in the chat saying F eight. I don't know if that's uh, hmm? King F eight. I don't know what. F8? What F eight? <laughs> what F eight? I like the square F eight too, but I don't know what I'm doing. Here. They need to explain it to us a little more. So, uh, okay, so rook b4, rook check, king d3, rook back, b7, rook a, and white marches his king up, takes the pawn on f5, well, we're and then see goes it. to g5 and takes the pawn on h5, and then white wins routinely. I guess this that's what we're doing. We're going to see. Yeah, this, there's nothing to... There's nothing to this. Oh, I see. Yeah, the king is just going to... The yeah. black king can't move anywhere it, yeah. because... He just needs to be able to take that f-pawn, right? The white king, and then he can go yeah. support. And then he can take the h-pawn, I think. There's Once nothing the black can do. Wait a minute. I'm a little everything. confused. Hey, I'm confused. Why can't the uh, white king just <laughs> be seven? What's wrong with that? Nothing. And the rook takes care of the and, and Judith loves your background, Alexi. Oh, thank you, Judith. Yeah, I think that wins too. I think White's probably uh, positionally so strong here that it this probably the both two methods of winning here. One by going over to the king side and taking everything. I predict and the other, going over to the queen side and yeah. taking everything. I want to go to the queen side. I like I like support <laughs> my pawn. Not me. I want to go over to the king's side. <laughs> well, let's see who's right. Let's see what, what happens. That? What is that logo? Is that some sort of amoeba up in the upper right hand corner of your, of your logo? <laughs> that's, that's the no, UT Dallas amoebas. UT Dallas. UT no. Dallas chess. Here, I'll, maybe if I move out of the what, way. What is UT Dallas? What are they? Not the amoebas. There. What, what's their name? <laughs> the amoebas. Yes, Texas is an amoeba, amoeba and California is a paramecium. I've never heard that before. It's a logo. For the chess program. Oh. And then repeat it all over. Rook B six okay. check, right? Or no. And, and then King E five. Yeah, Rook B six King E five. For King D five. King D five. It was twice. It was once again it was Black's move. Apparently it's never Black's move in Paul's mind. <laughs> King D five. Yeah, it's true. On King F6, I want to play Rook B6 check and King E5. I think that's just. Well, that's not you bad like that better. Okay. It's crucial. Oh wow. The fact that it's King D5, F4, King E5. Oh, King D5. I, I was right. Yeah. I said King, uh, King D5. I said King D5. Very nice. Very I haven't nice. seen anything yet. Uh, that's good enough as well. I think, like I said, both ways. Both ways. White is now so dominant that. Both if ways. I pay, if I pay money, will I get a will I, will I get like a priority speed on on my Twitch? This is like really slow. <laughs> Nothing's happening. Yet. I think it, it, it is a combination Nothing, of nothings for free. I know Don't what I can do. Watch, I can watch the game. Minimize the zoom. Minimize the zoom. I've gotten it out of the way, but I want to be able to see, it, see people's mouths moving when, I, when they talk. Oh, you never get to see them at the same time. Like okay. the mouths are going to okay. be late. Yeah, you won't see it at real time. It'll, it'll, All right, so is, I can go Alexi, over to, uh, Alexi. Uh, Black is trying to force White to go in on the queen side because if King e5, then Rook e8 check, 
and then scurries back to B A. So yeah. I'm all waiting I for no Biden. King C six, King C seven. I've been promoting this plan for several moves. <laughs> and that's it. Kyron is Kyron had had it in the bag. Here we go. <laughs> Fantastic win by Kyron Griffin. Kyron had it in the bag. In and, the and bag. probably his moves were correct all along. That's what I'm gonna say. That's before he gets on the chat and proves me wrong about something. <laughs> and here we have uh, Nicholas Wang and Arun Dixit. Oh, wow. The same pawn structure, but all the pieces are gone. That's right. I like the little uh, quadrant of pawns there on D6, <laughs> E6, D5, and E5. The yeah, that's quadrant. cute. Did you look at the end of my game, by the way? No. No, I don't think is. so. You bum. How far did you look? Uh, oh yeah, we should not at, at all. <laughs> like not at all. No, no, you were winning. We, we were wa like we were watching the game. Yeah, yeah, you were. You had a nice yeah, attack yeah, going. Yeah, we saw this. Yeah. Was in the center. All right, let's play it out. Yeah. All right, we'll see the Keep end. going, Abel. So, yeah, so we saw that. Okay, this uh, about we here is where we stopped. We saw this. Yeah. Okay, Queen C five, nice move. Look at oh, this. Like the rookie eight, yeah. Elliot, you should be proud of yourself. Okay. <laughs> amazing, <laughs> amazing win by <laughs> international right, well, masters. Let's let's take a look at the uh, at the other game. Oh, uh, we're not gonna see the very end. Elliot wants to show us the very end. That was it. That's, it. That's the very end, end right there. Anyway. That was He's it. Dead. That was the end. Uh, yeah, it's ridiculous. It should be too okay. ridiculous. Yeah. See, even it Alexi's white, all. Right? What, what more is there? <laughs> And here we have uh, Kevin Fong, Chess Appeals, against William Sartorio as black. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Next game. This looks, <laughs> this looks pretty balanced. I mean, both players have to be a little careful, but I don't see anything immediate for anybody here. Black's got this pin on the, on the e-file that he needs to watch out for, though. Let's... Uh, how do you take how do you take advantage of a G three as a threat? Let's check Mike Walder. If I was an answer. Oh, Mike played Rook D one, Elliot. Look at that. We were talking Ooh, about that. Or yeah, Paul, I think. Mike who? Mike Walder. <laughs> your your roommate. <laughs> the guy in the oh, next room. Wait till it shows up on my screen. The, the guy that cooks your food. The guy in the next room. The Grandmaster Chef. <laughs> the Grandmaster Chef. That's right. <laughs> A series of articles by no, I don't Alexi. think that, I don't think Rook D one is a mouse slip. Uh, I think it's a uh, it's an attempt to win the knight on D four, and and give up two pieces for a rook. And uh, Elliot's been taking the photos for the articles. That's right. Elliot's a photographer. Wow, Elliot. Nice. What was uh, there something in particular on the menu tonight? No. <laughs> no. Cup of we already, we already made the or, Mike and Elliot already photographed and ate the meal that's coming up, uh, for our current player. So. Oh, for the I can't next. That they've, I, they've I, I, so ninety one, yeah. White takes back with the rook and not the queen, and that's the um, yeah. Rook, but the, it, so black doesn't seem to have anything here, and. And it looks like it should boil down to white winning, probably, or at least <laughs> a lot of. I love of, that analysis. Do you used to be white able to, to. That's awesome. You used to be able to click on the, uh, uh, the, the the thing on the far right in the uh, the, um, the the dot uh, the the Google's dot doc thing. And get the game, but they screwed up with chess.com. They made their new version mandatory, and now you can't do that. You know what I'm talking about? I guess I could copy and paste the the. Uh, I don't know, I can't. Well, Elliot, that? we're looking at we're looking at your roommate's game with PG Star Three, and it looks I know, like. but I can't. It looks I like, can't bring it up. Well, How do you, you don't have up? to. It's on the you Twitch. Can, yeah, you can see it right Only there. Only eventually. Okay. It's on Twitch. Eventually, it's on Twitch. <laughs> you can't see it. Oh, Eventually, it. you're <laughs> going to be on Twitch, too. I'm twitching already. It. Okay, like so there it is. Minutes. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> the Twitch is in. Okay, Eventually, so you're going to be on Twitch, too. Um, uh, so the question is, can Black exploit somehow the weakness of White's back rank? The answer is... And the answer is probably the not. Is, my final answer is maybe. I don't think he can, actually. He's going to end what up about, with, with two rooks. It'll be two rooks versus queen and bishop. Yeah, two rooks versus... In other words, uh-uh. Yeah, yeah. So black is black is going to try to hold this with uh, rook versus two bishops, and maybe with everything, no weaknesses, it might be Actually, possible. It won't even be that. Oh, no, that's right. No, it wouldn't be that. Uh, hey, I'm a little worried. And are you worried that Mike has less than four minutes, Elliot? What do you think of that? Uh, I don't know. It, I, I, so rook d4 and then h4. I think White's definitely in the driver's seat here. I don't know how to tell you this, but it's uh, Black's move again. <laughs> Black played B6. He did? It's yeah. yeah, it's White's okay. move. <laughs> How come I didn't see that? Oh, because I didn't, actually I changed window. So he did. All right, so White's move. Takes, you can play H3, for heaven's sake. Takes with the no, this, is, this is great. This is completely fine. And now White's going to play H4 or something like that, or, an eight, or H3, and and try to grind Black down with a, an attack on the king side. Should it probably should succeed. And Black I, rook D4 is fine because there's no way in. There's no rook C1. There's no rook E1. Yeah, well, that's what he played. Rook D4, Elliot. Oh, he did he? Yeah. So let's. Uh... Yeah, let's move let's on move. here. <laughs> to keep my voice. I can. Let's go back to board three right. with I mean, Eric. You want to talk loudly because Mike's in the next room. Yeah, you wouldn't want to give away moves. Oh no, not that. Oh, I thought that's what you so were. So we're on board three. Oh, board. Something's over. What just ended? Board three. Okay, so White. Now. White has some penetration here down on the into Black's position. And this is a little worrisome, uh, I think, for Aiko. This is like Aiko's bishop is uh, out of the mix a bit. Well, maybe bishop takes f4. And, and if that's probably the right move. Bishop takes f4 and then... And then queen takes f6, sorry. Yeah. Why do you have to spoil it for me? Because you can't play rook f8. Yeah, okay, so then, yeah, bishop d6, and how about then bishop d6? Yeah, because you Well, then queen takes d8 seven. check, yeah. Well, that too, yeah, yeah. Oh, so queen takes yeah. f6 is coming. We're going to get to see it. I think uh, black is in some trouble here. Yes, I think black Bishop h6, rook e7. Right. There's no immediate mate, though, threat, but, okay, c5 blocking the heck out of that bishop, but that's White true. seems to have a couple of, of... No, that's a good, I like c5. I think that's a good try. And for those that are just tuning in, I'm this is sure. round Rookie three seven. of the Tuesday Night Marathon. I notice we got uh, 45 viewers. Thank you for watching. Yeah, someone says still rookie seven, but then we can play bishop h6, right? Yeah, that's kind of like the variation we were looking at before, actually, and that mm -hmm. like, might even be an improvement for for black. Ah, C5. Isn't so queen takes f4, and white just picks up a clean pawn, but black gets out with c takes b4, a, b4, and then maybe c5. But then rookie, you know, this vulnerable, black is on the defensive here, and it might maybe a pawn down in a minute. So I know one of your favorite uh, chat people. <laughs> I saw, I saw he's hanging around. That's uh, Max Howe in the chat. Your chess.com name is weird, and it's weird because you're the one that set it to that when you joined chess.com. So what we do is uh, there's like a functionality where we're able to put uh, players' names so that yeah, we bring up your real name that you registered under. Yes. <laughs> so if it's weird, you put it there. <laughs> but uh, how'd you do, Max? How'd your game go? 
I could look in the results, but. Should we move um, on or? Yeah, well, let's move on. Congratulations. Got an interesting position, but if there's other things to look at, we should look at that too. Well, let's take a look at this end game. Is this uh, a draw? Yeah, this should be a draw. Okay. You should tell us what Shakmani Bulletin has to say about this one. Well, this should be a draw because it's going it to end up, up it's gonna end up <laughs> in the Philidor position. So this should be a draw. The most black can do is get an F4, and then and then uh, it it's, it'll either be a drawn king and pawn ending or the Philidor position. So this is a draw. I would lose this game if this was me as black. You would lose it as black? As black, I would lose this game. Wow. That's how bad the end games are. Good. <laughs> oh, black, black can get in F4, you know, uh, oh, wow. and... White has to just be careful that he exchanges the rooks in the right way. and Or not at all. Or not at all, of course, because then he can draw by just playing the filler. What about rook f3 here? Yeah, I was wondering about it. It's still not going to be, a, it's not going to do anything. And black has been declining draw offers in this game. Right, right. It's so weird that I can't see the game anymore. You can't see it. So this, oh, see, so King G2 is, uh, you've got to be careful if you play moves like that. Very committed. You king don't. You play with your rook back and forth. Takes, king takes. In fact, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, looks like it loses to takes in F4. No, F, G, take, oh, what? Yeah, it's a, it's a bad blunder, rook, king G2. And this is where you would about? lose it, Abel, by playing moves like King G2. As black, even? Uh, yeah. I mean, Abel no. Black. <laughs> Abel Abel is black. Black. <laughs> that's that's. Oh, Abel look at this. Black. Why doesn't black play F4? It looked like F4 just won the game. Maybe this is, this doesn't, King E3. What's going on here? <laughs> like geniuses or else, or else just, hmm. Is F4 such a draw? And Kyron is saying it's a distance it opposition. It doesn't win with a distant opposition. Okay, takes king F4. What? What do you play after king takes F4? King G2, maybe? <laughs> really? And then if F3 check? That's it. Right oh. there. No, I trade. Ah. I trade and then play king G2. Now it's, now it's lost. There we go. Um, Kyron, Kyron, congratulations on your win. We enjoyed watching your endgame technique. Yeah, we uh, studied that uh, immensely. All right, so this one all over. Let's uh, move on. Congratulations to Nitish. Paul did have some doubt. No, I, I, you're wrong. You're wrong, Kyron. I think <laughs> like you played the best game. Uh, the, all the uh, best. That's moves. right. That's what Paul wants us to say. See, yes. Paul, Paul forgets this is all recorded and on video. <laughs> <laughs> I had faith in you. I I hey. said that you played all the right moves. <laughs> that's right. You know what else, Kyron? I predicted the whole King D five and then marching over to C seven. She did. Huh? She did. She you know called what? that. You know what, Abel? I want. Here's what I want, Abel. I want you to let me loose to play in the TNM one, one time. Let you loose any time, man. Any time you want to do it. We, we, I'll we, come in. I can't comment, though. I'll have to just be one of the participants. So. That's right. Hey, I, I have Alexi. Yeah, I got to get in there. I have Alexi yeah, right here. Elliot and Gadir and... What I'll do is I'll ask uh, Sam. Get my face handed to, to me. I'll, I'll ask Sam Shanklin to do the commentary, and then we'll just fix wow. on your game. And this, yeah, the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it increases the entertainment value, you should do it. I have but, no doubt um, that would <laughs> increase the entertainment. <laughs> yeah, having Sam uh, comment for sure. So Michael's yeah, doing sure. great here. That it's Those still a long bishops, road. So. Uh, it's, a, it's a long, long way to tip her over. seconds. Oh, yeah, that time is no good. 
It's a long way to Tipperary. Yeah, you've got to grind. <laughs> but Rook D7 is annoying. Did he play it? I heard him always. No, he played Rook F4. So, trading is wrong. In other games, uh, still much much like better for White. Much Kevin better. Yanovsky, Ethan Boldy, and William Sartorio all won their games. Also. So is this the last game? It might be by now, right? No, uh, it's one of the last ones, but there's still a few games going on. Oh, okay. So I'm yeah. Well, I'm um, I'm stirring in all kinds of things, you know, into the brew that. Mm -hmm. um, to create controversy. Uh, Mike's, Mike's in trouble on the floor. That's good, yeah. For entertainment value, for sure. <laughs> stir the pot. Paul trying to stir the pot. Congratulations, gonna gonna win, even after Paul, the rooks in your arena. This is going to be a tough game. And uh, there are top games but going. I, I feel the competitive edge a lot, and to... Always you want to play these strong players like Kyron and Elliot, you know, and Gadir, and you think, how would I do if I played against them, you know? Yeah, we should find out. Let, let's do yeah. a quick check-in on board four. This was uh, Nicholas Wang and Arun Dixit. Look at this. Wow. Well, White has found a way here. Right. It Incredible. Looked, it looked even-ish, but uh, maybe not quite so much. Anymore. Wow, that's amazing that Black has lost, is is losing this game. And Black was up upon at one point with the... And, and uh, Nicholas is either a magician or starting to live up to some kind of um, prophecy. <laughs> wow, I like that, huh? I like that. Well, I mean, I asked my favorite, what is one of my favorite <laughs> that, that quotes? Should, that should be his uh, nickname. We call him the Prophecy. <laughs> <laughs> and wow, he's going to, looks like he might close the show here. I don't think there is a chess prophet. Um, and there's certainly no prophet in chess, you know. And he pulled um, it out. <laughs> Thank really you. Gave you wow. Wow. Oh, this, wow. is a, this is a great victory upset for upset for Nicholas Wang. Yeah, against well, it's Ruth. no longer looking like an upset. When yeah, he no, wins. no, yeah. I mean, he's he's done. I this think before. we're going to start seeing the the giant killer Nicholas Wang coming up here very shortly. And this is board three: Eric Han and Akko Hidari. Akko is holding on by the skin of his teeth here. This is tough. This is looking like the other game with, um, or even worse. Yeah, it's like the other game or even worse. Them. I like that. <laughs> That's funny. The other game or even worse. Actually, that's not what he wanted to do right there, right? Yeah, Rook B2 just. Uh, this uh, White's just good. winning now. I would have rather done Rook Well, C2. I think White was winning as before yeah. anyway. Watch out for Nicholas Wang, everybody. I'm going to say it again. <laughs> the prophecy, yeah. Call him the hey, prophecy. Hey, we're being sent to a we're being sent to a breakout room. What's up? With what? What? I just saw that comment. <laughs> I guess so. I don't see that comment, uh, but definitely uh, not sending anyone mm -hmm. yet to any breakout room. Okay. Aiko, Aiko is just. There's no no way this is uh, um, feasible. Yeah. Let's go to uh, Mike Walters. Um, He's got 24 seconds left. Wow, this is some kind of that's this is the reduced material. Seconds, you know. You got to think White's going to find some way in here. What do we? Okay, I see we're being sent to a breakout room. Oh, and TMM. No, no, not me. I'll be a substitute commentator. I don't want to play. <laughs> no, I would want to play for the whole banana, whole tournament, you know, and and round all the way through. Well, you sure mangled this. Traded everything off. <laughs> this black skin that was weak, and now, now there's nothing to it. Mm. Breaking news, that's true. 
Well, Paul does so well in his arena. He won his arena. Fantastic. Yes. Performance today. Elliot, did you? Play I did almost as good as Arena Crush, right? You did. That's right. Except she won in all her games, no draws. You had one draw. Right. But then you went on a roll and won your next seven. So. It's hard to get started. That's yeah, the point of out of time too. Rick, uh, Paul is like a gladiator in his arena, yes. That's I think White should pro try to play King G3 and go after the G4 pawn. I don't, nothing's going to happen yet on the... Yeah, G G4 was a mistake. Probably. Oh. White should get so over G4. there. I, I don't know. White <laughs> should get over to King G3 <laughs> or something. Black is starting to, well, to stop beat fall five. apart here. Just got to play quick. I know. I guess King E4 and try to get over and win the G pawn. I think White's probably winning now. Yeah. Yeah, Bishop B5. King F4. Two pawns right. hanging. You're Bishop on B6. This is Except terrible for wrong, Black. Though. Nice game by Michael. Now he's just got to He's, he's got to make sure he plays he's on not the lose increment. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe Black should him. resign. I would resign no, if I was Black. I mean, White's winning like two different pawns, right? Yeah. We'll Black should just resign. With your opponent, four seconds left. You know what I did, Elliot, for the, fr for the first time ever? I was losing a game, and I, put, <laughs> I deliberately put my queen in take where it threatened his queen, his unprotected queen. And I'd never done that in a blitz game ever. I that, the, that old underhanded mm. thing, and it worked. <laughs> he overlooked his queen. You know, and it was yeah, a, cool. he was a he's a master. So I mean, I and of course people have tried it on me, and it's worked like one out of every fifty times or something. As of course it will, you know. <laughs> this should be, an, this um, should be easy for Mike now. This should be really I didn't easy. know whether to feel proud of myself or ashamed of myself. You know, the the the, the line is very thin sometimes. This is this is very easy for Mike now. He can just gain time and then clean his pawn. It should be easy. I mean, he could play just random moves just to pick up a few. Yeah, he does need to pick up time because. Does Michael know how to do that? Like, you know, you don't have to keep. No the best move just move and pick up some time on the increment and he resigned yeah. black resigned oh. he did. well that was sporting of him good yeah good. we want to see that fantastic i think all the games may be done i'll check with judith i don't <clears throat> i don't have all the games popped well, up well elliot but... you better you better skid out out of here and win your next game we'll be watching <laughs> yeah we'll be yeah. Uh, we'll be critiquing uh, it I, I tell you, I'll be flagging people in opposite color bishops that game, <laughs> yeah, with no pawns on the board, preferably. Yeah, I, you know, you gotta win by hook or by crook at sometimes, you know, and I and the game ended in a draw, which was a very poetically just justice as well, I think. So, Kyron, you can call me out uh, on that one, but. Um, I did use it in an underhanded fashion. Oh, the pairings are up. First time ever. Are they? And, uh, uh, I don't know if, if they are up. I put the link because the pairings will be up oh, any okay. minute now if they're not up already. I'll be back in 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, we'll see oh, you. Okay. okay. Oh, they're not up. It's just the link for the future. Yeah, I okay. just I just put up the, the, the link up. Uh, the next round will start at 8 p.m. This will be round four of the Tuesday night uh, marathon. Actually, Abel, do you need to take a break and have me sit here for uh, a while? Yeah, just give me like two minutes, and then I'll be okay. right back. And then okay. uh, and then we, we all take a little breaks if we need it, and then uh, we'll get running with the next round. Representing yeah. the oldest chess club in the United States, the Mechanics Institute. And uh, we're just finished round three of the Tuesday night marathon. And uh, it's not been a marathon for Gadir Guzinev, who's winning every game like in five minutes or something like that. So <laughs> yes. we, we as a chess club need to um, 
represents. Uh, and we have Elliot in our corner. He's uh, could get paired with uh, Ged Deer any moment, and we're not this, uh, not this round. Not maybe not this round, but it's and he uh, gave really gave Ged Deer a fantastic game in the last Tuesday night marathon. Um, a, a really positive example of how to play chess, you know, against a grandmaster, and which is and then lost. Take the fight to him. Well, you drew. Maybe it was the the Tuesday night beforehand. We're the, thinking the, the one, one that you drew. drew yeah. The one that you drew. Yeah. In fact, it's I hard to keep track. You play so many good games, Elliot. Um, the star club. The star of the mechanics institute. They. You, we've started to call you Mr. Tuesday Night. Did you hear that? <laughs> You know, there's a Mr. Saturday night, and now, Elliot, you are Mr. Tuesday night. Yeah, but unfortunately, in a little while, the TNM is going to stand for the Mon Master. <laughs> it's gotten stronger. You're playing with grandmasters now, and mm -hmm. and um, there's some. We had um, uh, Lenderman playing. Yeah, he was good. And I think yeah, he'll be back. The U.S. Championship this year, so that's that's. Pretty high quality. Okay, yeah, gonna, no, no, no. Lenderman is one of the best players right. in the country. Take a break, right? Good luck. Yeah. Okay, see you later. No. <laughs> I guess just disconnect. There he goes. He disconnected his Zoom. All right. So, what have you been up to, Alexi? Well, let's see. I guess uh, Abel probably will help me talk about the uh, conference when we come back on, but I was presenting at a conference this weekend, as was Judith. That For was FIDE Arbiter? What is Oh no, yeah, that's no. coming up this weekend, but right. I, I gave my presentation a practice run this past weekend, and then I'm doing it for real on uh, Friday. So wow, very yeah. cool. It is super cool. How about you? Are you ready? It does not look like you're ready to move. I think I still see books on the bookshelf behind you. Yeah, well, we're moving in a couple of days and oh, okay. uh, not far, but we're in San Francisco and um, uh, a stone's throw from the Mechanics Institute Chess Club and um, really looking forward to the doors opening there. Oh, no. Elliot says he has to play Mike. Yeah, well... <laughs> A roommate versus roommate pairing. Yeah. The computer has got a sense of humor, I think. Yeah. Now. And um, that we don't give it credit for. It's so impartial and and um, that it creates its own comedy in a way. Isn't there a way like that you could set it though to avoid oh, like oh we you can override the computer yeah. but but um I thought, part I of the pairing manually so she could have like, oh that's true that's true she's doing the pairings manually yeah so, so human cruelty is involved <laughs> <laughs> abel i see uh judith cruelly very cruelly paired michael walter with uh elliot winslow oh is that right Oh, yeah. my goodness. And I, I, I think it was done deliberately just to get at both of them, you know. I'm that is right. <laughs> Karit Panugani and Gadir Gusenov, Elliot and Mike Walter. Oh, that'll be a good matchup. Nicholas Wang and Eric Hahn, Micro Bear. That, wow. That'll be a great okay. match. And William Sartorio okay. and Kyron Griffith. Okay, I'll be back in 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. All right. Hi, Mike. Hi, Mike in the chat. Yeah, oh. and... Wow, sorry. And uh, Felix is apologizing to uh, uh, Elliot for the uh, crappy game he played. <laughs> His words, not mine, in the round. Let me fix our uh, names. I, I still forget to remind uh, Paul not to uh, <laughs> log off of the uh, Twitch oh, or the, the, the Zoom. The Zoom. Let me get that on. Oh, Mike, you can see we were looking at your game. The position's still up. <laughs> as proof, as we're proof. We're low on time. And uh, Felix saying his head wasn't there. Yeah, no worries. It happens. Uh, sometimes uh, 
we're always looking to play our best, and sometimes uh, it just doesn't happen for whatever reason. We know you're a better player than that, so uh, just uh, come back in the next round. Let's see who Felix has in the next round, uh, his re redemption round. Redemption round. <laughs> the redemption round. He'll he'll be playing uh, Zaki Barav, so uh, that'll be a tough match, but I think uh, evenly matched, and we'll see... We'll see how it goes. So, what's going on at uh, UT Dallas? You have uh, you were telling me earlier you're grading papers. Uh, what what class are yeah. you teaching? Yeah, um, I teach two classes. They're both about the game of chess and education. So, I I uh, I was Mike's probably surprised to see me here because I'm like oh, I can't work on our article on grading papers, but um, I am giving myself a break and joining the Twitch for the evening and then going back to grading. Oh, papers. good. You have to have yeah. that mind distraction to kind of give you I, refresh. I still, have the page. I still have nine more ten-page papers to grade. Ay, ay, ay. Then I'll be done. Wow, that that is a lot of paper. Now, yeah. are you the type of instructor that grades uh, mostly on content, or do you look at form and, uh, or do you look at both equally? Um. Well, Gra twenty percent grammar of and. 20% of the grade is for APA style, which is American Psychological oh, Association. Yeah. That's so tough. I'm trying to teach how to I would not do well in your class. Yeah. And reference method. <laughs> but then, uh, the you know, a lot of it is for how they use the course materials in the paper. But I was telling um, Mike, what I already finished grading was all their chess games because they were required. They have to play two chess games during the semester with classmates and they have to notate and annotate them. And it takes surprisingly long to play through each game and analyze it. And are some of these some of these students are from like the UT team, right? Like we were talking about yes. IMs yes. and GMs and yes, Keaton, who's going to come on later, took my classes, so he can tell you what it was funny. like to be on the other end as a student. But I, I got really smart a while back, thanks to a different IM, not Keaton, an IM named uh, Sal Bersees. I used to the requirement was for every student to play two games during the semester against classmates. And when team members would be in the class, they would just wipe out their classmates. So Sal suggested, hey, if you have a team member in the class, have them analyze the games for their classmates. And I was like, this is the most brilliant idea ever because then I don't have to analyze all the games. I can assign some to the team member who's in the class. Sure. So I, now I'm especially happy when I have chess team members in the class. Perfect. And that's, uh, that saves <laughs> quite a bit of time doing that. Uh, yeah, it really helps. Right? I only have one IM in my class right now. So, so I'm hoping for next semester. So some of your students are going to be playing in the uh, Pan American Intercollegiate? Uh, Absolutely. In yes. Dallas usually sends four teams. Right. So I I would be surprised if we did not this year. Well, especially it being <laughs> online. So. Yeah. Well, we we have the budget. We go to the in person. With yeah, you're teams. always yeah you're always there, and uh, <laughs> a lot of the big teams. Texas Tech is the defending champ. That's right. And yeah. uh, Texas is awesome for chess. Yeah, you got a lot of uh, you know, you're, you're it's like you're fighting with uh, St. Louis to be the uh, the the chess. Uh, the college uh, chess capital. The, yes, that's the center of chess. College chess. Yes, that's right. Very cool. I really like it when back in the old days before COVID, Jim Stallings, the director of the UT Dallas chess program, would let me tag along to the Pan Ams sometimes. So I, that's how I got to go to San Francisco. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Pan Am. A couple years ago, yeah. Yeah, before that was Charlotte. Fun. I did not choose to go to Charlotte. Now I regret it because that. I mean, who knows when I'll get to travel now? I should have been like, I should have gone <laughs> stuff on that. Well, nobody knew. Nobody had any idea. In Charlotte, like I, I didn't know anything about Charlotte, but I bet it was nice. Well, let me uh, pull up. Let me start getting ready oh, yeah, for the next good. rounds of games. Um. We have 34 people watching. Hello, 34 people out there. Yeah, and if you're uh, <clears throat> just joining us, uh, the next round, round four of the Tuesday Night Marathon at the Mechanics Institute will be starting uh, in a couple of minutes. Uh, mm -hmm. What We pair the games manually, 
in this tournament on chess.com so what we have to do is we start all the games manually and then we'll pop them up so even though the round starts at eight uh we won't have uh, some games up until a few minutes after that and then uh, we'll pull them up we'll have a uh, paul back and then we'll cover the uh, fourth round <clears throat> which we where we have some uh great games at the top and then at around nine o'clock uh, we will have international master uh, keaton kira who will join us that is exciting yeah for a good 10 15 minutes and uh we'll see if kyron's still playing i know they're good friends he can uh chat about the game and then uh you can reminisce about the uh, UT Dallas days. That's so right. it'll be a lot of fun. We had Keaton on uh, in our chess social last Friday. It was a fantastic, uh, enlightening interview. Uh, I watched that. I watched it uh, on YouTube later. I didn't watch it yeah. live. But I and you know what's fascinating about that is, you know, when we do our chess social interviews, uh, we really don't come in with a plan that, you know, this is what we're going to ask. You know, these are the questions. Uh, we let everyone know the day of, look, we're just going to, we have an idea of what we're going to ask. It's sort of, uh, uh, it's pretty random. Uh, you know, are you okay with that? And he's like, yeah, absolutely. No, no topic is uh, off limits. So, uh, but then when we asked the question about what was it about his background that made him more, um, uh, able to kind of sniff out cheaters, right? <clears throat> Fair play violators. Um, he started talking about his the blending of his background in psychology because he was a psych major. Um, his background in poker, his extensive uh, immersion in chess, uh, but also his uh, uh, some of the stuff he he does uh, for spirituality with his meditation. And uh, you know, reading on you know energy work and stuff like that. I thought that was, I was like fascinated. I'm like, wow, this is this is awesome because you know, he, he's picking from different disciplines to add uh, uh, to sort of fine tune his uh, his like feeling in this certain area of feeling like something's not right when it comes to a player on the board. So. Pretty interesting stuff. And I see that Mike is saying that he helped uh, he helped Kyron prepare to play against Keaton. I think that's what he's conveying there in the chat. That's a good prep or prep for the team uh, match. Is that when we were I playing Chess.com team matches? Yeah, probably it was. Probably it was mechanics versus whoever Keaton plays for. Is my guess. No. Uh, uh no maybe it was the pro chess league because uh i know keaton played for san diego uh, oh the, the state matches the uh state uh chess northern cup. versus southern the, that makes sense. right the state yeah. chess cup which wh where are we at with that i know that uh just like online had an article up yeah it, it looked like northern california one like but, but I think we're uh, I in think playoffs. I thought it was like Iowa, Iowa won. Okay, good luck, Mike. Good luck, Elliot. I got to be fair. <laughs> They're roommates. Yeah, yeah. So the games have started. As soon as we have a game, we'll pull it up. Oh, it was Washington State that won. Yeah, now that you say that, I think I remember that. They won the uh, overall or? Yeah, I think they did. Is I that think right? Got it. All right, so I'm going to do this psychedelic thing I do because i got to close oh, the right. games. So you have to bring up all the games. Yeah, i got to get rid of the games of the previous round. And uh, right. here we go. we got some. Some of the games have started. Okay. Let's, let's pull some of the games we got up. Because uh, the top boards are going to be uh, pretty interesting. Absolutely. I don't know why this is up. And, uh... All right. Oh, well, okay. so here we have Kyron playing as black. All right. And, uh... I'm kind of deciding, do I just uh, keep pulling games up? Actually, uh, I'll stay here. 
uh, I have the games from the top boards up. Uh, okay. Let's say just covering these, and then later on when all the games are up, then I'll just do it then uh, rather than wait. So let's go to board one and with uh, Kirit Panugani from uh, UC Berkeley playing Grandmaster Gadir Gusenov. Uh, oh, Kirit's going to be exciting. trying to be the first one to really uh, push him back a little bit or try to in this well, Tuesday Night Marathon. Look how fast they're both playing so far. <laughs> You know, and, I guess they're still completely in their prep. And hopefully it's all uh, book prep so far. It looks it looks like a very standard Sicilian position right now to me. I'm not an expert at it, but it looks pretty standard. It says uh, Sicilian Accelerated Dragon. Okay, well then I... Roxy Bind. It wasn't rocket science to guess it was some kind of Sicilian. <laughs> hey, and do you pick up... Uh, you know, I mean, you're teaching at UT Dallas, but uh, uh, what's it like being around all that chess talent? Do you do, do you feel like... You know, it's, it's, it's super exciting. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've been waiting to brag on this for a while, <laughs> but I played in an intramural tournament, Demon 10, and I got to lose to Anton Kovalyov, who was in the top 100 players in the world. Yeah. I lost to Razvan Piotu, who's the grandmaster, but then I beat Prasanna Rao. In oh, game wow. Game. That's a big win. Yes. And I was so excited that even though it was game 10, I immediately went and reconstructed the game and published it everywhere I could find. Nice. Congratulations. So, yes. <laughs> he I was so gracious about it. He was super gracious about it, though. And uh, one of his students <laughs> is in the chat. <laughs> Oh, Prasanna is your coach? Okay, well, ask him about that one time at UT Dallas where there was a game in 10 tournament, an intramural tournament that he probably didn't care about that much, and there was a bunch of pizza waiting to be eaten. But <laughs> nonetheless, all that being said, I was white, and I played well, and I won. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, this is so exciting. But normally, of course, yes, they're, they're so good, but it's, it's just an honor to get to play against them when you have the chance to play against them. I mean, I got paired Grandmaster, Grandmaster, International Master. I mean, what, who, how, how lucky am I to get to do that, right? No, that's fantastic. And Prasanna yeah. is, a, is a great friend of the Mechanics Institute. Uh, we've uh, partnered yeah, with him. Yeah, I guess he, he left Texas and came out to you. Yeah. No, yeah. he's so gracious. He was super nice about it and, uh, you know, <laughs> didn't complain when I copied it all down and started publishing it places, so... <laughs> That was really nice of them. And here we have uh, William Sartorio, who's uh, a 2,000 plus player, scholastic player. I think he's in high school against oh, wow. uh, Kyron Griffith. Uh, and Kyron uh, started with the uh, Karo Khan, which he is very mm -hmm. comfortable That's with. That's why there's that pawn on H4, I guess. Right. Can you see me? Hey, I can Paul. see you, Paul. <laughs> we see you and hear you. Put up there anymore, but your face is there. Me, I'm back. Paul, you missed you missed my uh, brag about that I once beat <laughs> Prasanna Rao in game 10 in a tournament. Oh, Another nice. Tournament. Wow. <laughs> intramural tournament. There He's a go. very strong player. But he, he was a UT Dallas student. No, he, that's the only time I got to play him. I mean, we used to have two times a year in-person intramural tournaments, and I would make it an extra credit for my online students to go play and so then I would go check up on them and play too. So it was fun. And here we have Nicholas Wang against uh, <clears throat> Eric Khan and did, uh, oh, so it's, uh, I'm assuming it's find the, White's uh, move here. Okay. Another Velimirovich attack. So that, that is correct. Just like uh, we've seen him play it already against, I think, Elliot and Elliot won. I mean, this is very sharp stuff. Somebody is saying that Prasanna Rayo is their coach. Yeah, yes. we were talking about that. I think that was that. because yeah. I was like, uh, Abel was asking me, he gave me an opening to brag because he's like, what's it like being around all the strong UT Dallas chess team members? So. That was my, my opening to share my uh, persona story. It must rub off. I mean, of course. 
it, it's super yeah. exciting to to be around. I mean, you know, Paul, I got to play against Anton Kobalyov. This is someone that beat Anand in the World Cup before the whole getting kicked out for wearing shorts thing happened. <laughs> that was that. That was, uh, that, that was that, utterly ridiculous. It was so ridiculous. I was so upset on Anton's behalf. You know, you beat he beat Anand. He was on a roll, and then that happened. So upsetting. Yeah, you know, I mean, and, and yes. it goes back to what I was saying about um, about that. There's, you know, there, there's this sets of rules, including dress codes and all kinds of stuff that would have just been absurd back in the day. <laughs> I mean, players came to the board, you know, with long hair and Ash pictures trees. of their pictures of their guru. You know, on their, on, and you know, smoking cigarettes and uh, you know, exhibiting all kinds of individual and strange stuff. I mean, um, I, I've never heard pictures of their guru. <laughs> yeah, it's like an aid. <laughs> but you so, know, but I was saying that Kobalyov after that tournament. I mean, he's. He's a computer science master's student. He could have finished by now, but I, he really hasn't played after that, you know, and I think that's such a shame. I mean, he was in the top 100 in the world. Yeah, you that's know? really a shame. I mean, uh, they shouldn't, um, it shouldn't discourage him. Um, it's, it's pretty discouraging when you're having the tournament of your life. You're, you beat Anand in a match in the World Cup, and then that happens. I mean, I'd be discouraged. Yeah. You know. So what do anyway, you think? What do you think of the game, Paul? Oh yeah, back to the game. Sorry. Black looking all right. Well, white got a. There's a pawn here hanging at d6. I agree. Shall we take it? And there's also moves like just bishop d4. Um, although then bishop to b3, and the rook might get awkwardly but in they trouble. Can play rook d6, right? If bishop b3. Well, let's see. Rook d6. I mean, could black play rook take c3? Yeah, I think that's what's black. And then knight takes e4 and then takes on c3. But I think that's, that's probably what black would do. What about Paula Holy? Uh, a different idea? I guess it doesn't work because of your bishop b3, but I was wondering about like bishop b5. Maybe it's just useless because of bishop b3. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's some tactical stuff here, but it looks like white. If white finds the right move here, should be okay. Well, F3 white plays a very quiet move. Yeah, F three makes sense too. I mean, let's double down on protecting the E four pawn and and yeah. try to and try to um, you know maintain some of the positional advantages that white has. But you know what? I think this is Gadir's closest game so far this tournament. Yeah, he's been wiping everyone out. Yeah, at least this isn't a wipeout. Yay. So let's check on uh, board two, which just happens to be uh, played in the same household with uh, I think Elliot, that's so funny. <laughs> Elliot Winslow and Mike Walder. I mean, are they just going to... Oh, Elliot's wet. I was going to say, are they just going to make a draw? But I guess they're going to just duke it out. No, they don't. They don't agree to quick draws. Yeah. They always play, uh, play it out. Yeah, it's good training, I guess. <laughs> I think we were joking uh, the last time they played each other. This is like, you know, probably the 1500th game. Wow. Well, we have a, a very standard uh, Maroxy Bind uh, Dragon, Accelerated Dragon here. And <clears throat> nothing much to see yet. And yeah, then, it's still early. And then here's uh, board three with Nicholas Wang and Eric Hahn. And Nicholas is pushing that pawn. 
So this is some kind of theory, probably, uh, undoubtedly, that I don't know. Well, it seems like a lot of your mechanics players are playing the Sicilian, huh? Yes. The Queen's Gambit heroine was always playing the Sicilian as black, right? Yeah. The the fighting defense, huh? Well, let's see. If black plays E takes D4, G takes F6, Bishop F6, Knight D5. Looks to me like white's good there. Queen D8 or Bishop G5. I mean, it's still a game. And then let's take a look at board four with uh, William Sartorio and Kyron Griffith. I think black has, has gotten something going here that's looking good. I mean, the bishop can come out to b4 check and forces king f1. And, you know, black can play bishop e2 and knight g4. And so I think black is trying to find a way to find a almost, you know, this, this is a strong looking position for black. Of course, it's not over. And, uh, but bishop check, king f1, or queen a5 check, king f1. Tough little position, though. And let's move on to this game between... He's playing Javier, unusual kid. <laughs> Javier Silva and Akko Hidari. So white's threatening to take on g5. And oh, but it's been defended now. Well, there's still things are in the balance here. Black's pieces are a little awkward uh, over there on the uh, on the old king side. So right. yeah, I guess we have to play bishop takes d2 if we want to try to save our pawn, right? I don't know if we want to try to save our pawn. That knight on h5 is not having much fun right now. Black could throw in g6 first. And there you go. Oh, Which he does. He called it. He called it. Good job. So let's go back up to board one and see how Gusinov is doing. There we go. Board one. Well, the pawn on d6 is still there. <laughs> well, the queens have come off, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and like I predicted, white's rook is getting harassed here a little bit. Uh, or is this a possibility of harassing it by playing bishop c2 and stuff like that? And white's, white looks like... Uh, this could turn into a sort of a draw by repetition here. Bishop g7, bishop d4, bishop h6. Gusinov is just, uh, his, Black's position is shaky enough that, that um, it might be a good result for Black to, to play bishop g7 and repeat. You think Gadir would want to draw out? of this position well you know he wants to play it safe and he's had an easy tournament so far he's this position may be not so great for him if he just plays normal moves um uh, you know and white's sitting on a positional plus here it's not you know and it could depending on things I think a deer is going to take a draw. Let's just put it that way. You think that? Uh, yeah. I, I, I can't I imagine that. But, I mean, maybe the position is... He's done it before, right? He's taken yeah, a few Yeah, but who draws. is? I mean, he did it with Kyron Griffith or something, right? Well, this is a player who you can see is a master by the rating. That's right. right. There's that little red NM down there. <laughs> well, he's also got the rating of the player, so he knows he's playing somebody that's decent. Um and also, White's been playing a good game, you know, um, solid. 
And I'm, I, you know, I'm like, what's black going to do? Is black going to exchange bishops here? White's still going to be sitting on a nice position. All white has to play king f2, bring the rook on h1 into the game. White's going to be sitting well. What? How does black create play here? Yeah, that's a good question. That and that's d6 is not not a great pawn. Oh, and, well, so I'm wrong. He plays bishop f8. So he's going to try to find um, life for the knight at e8. Yeah, and I was just, I was just thinking about that knight when you you uh, mentioned it. I was thinking maybe it will go to like c7, e6, and c5. Maybe end up on five. What do you think? Well, I think black is taking a, a calculated risk, a little bit of one by playing bishop f8. You know, he's the grandmaster, and, right. and he might be slightly worse here. You know, if Karpov was white or something, I would be like, well, you know, what are you doing? But, you know. Um, All right, well, let's think about what's white's plan here. What would you like white to do? Well, uh, I want to complete my development. I want to bring I want to bring my king up. And you right. Take these positions in stages. Yeah. You know, to, you know, just improve your position and um, try to create a little bit of space. Um, I think throwing in, uh, you know, bringing the rook into the game to e1 or c1 and then trying to play bishop d1. Right, yeah might be it might be one way to sort of you know there's there's space gaining moves on the king side like g4 and h4 and f4 and so white's got a bunch of things to play with here black not so much i don't think but you know it's interesting rick in the in the chat also suggested bringing the knight to c5 but via a different route than I suggested. Yeah, I mean, and but let's put a black knight on e5 or c5. E5, yeah. And then and then you have to, you know, if it can get there, and white, you know, where's it going to go from there? Like That's it's true. still not solid on. And this is the kind of thing that you, you know, you continue to investigate as you make yeah. your plans and moves. Let's shall we move on? Yeah, yeah. Uh, here's uh, the game between uh, Nicholas Wang and Eric Hahn. Wow, the two. Yeah. So here we again, this Nicholas the with the attacking stance. You know that yes. he loves to take. He's a super aggressive player and um, exciting player to watch. Is white threatening rook g7 check? Probably not. It's almost interesting though, like it, 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 you could almost do it. Um, G7, if it was white queen g3 or what? And then queen, yeah, queen g3 and rook g1 or queen d4, but it's black's move and black plays bishop e6. Can you still do it? I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, rook g7, king g7, queen g3, king h8. Then rook g1. And then rook g8. You, your queen oh. can go to c3 check, but then he plays f6. You know, so it doesn't. You know, that's why White needs to sacrifice there. It Nicholas seems like is pondering it. Lower. Yeah, I mean, rook, rook g three or f four, those two like look like, or just take over the long diagonal, play queen d four right here. Yeah, I like that too. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, White's a little better here, and uh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, black's well, wait, wait a minute. What am I saying? White's a pawn down. It's probably equal chances. <laughs> yeah, I mean, black's rook on a8 needs to get into the game, but that could be accomplished. Let me check in on uh, board four, which is uh, 
Kyron Griffith and William Sartorio. So that's what happened. Bishop Check forced the king to move, and then um, an exchange eventually happened. Yeah, Black played the knight into g4, just as I predicted. Oh, yay, Paul. Good predicting. <laughs> that's my job. I'm not yeah. I, prophecy and prediction. Awesome. So we'll go back to board one. The white's in trouble here, I think. And here we are at board one. Hey, speaking of prediction, who said knight c7? There it is. Yeah, but I mean, you have to put all these moves together. I mean, right now it's it's just moves being played and players trying to get their pieces out. It, right. It's true knight c7 is coming or something like that, but white, the, the question is, is, you know, is this still, you know, I think black is playing a, a little bit on a, the precipice here. I'm not convinced that this, all this is so tidy. Black is black is trying to keep it complicated and looking for a shot in. I want to like White's game. It's it's it it looks sounder to me. But um, you know. Oh, maneuvering phase. Yeah, I suppose we could call it that. Yeah, maneuvering. Yeah, maneuvering phase, exactly. And the players are trying to optimize their pieces and White is finishing his development to bring the rook at h1 into the game and Black is trying to find some squares for his pieces. But look, you know, there's the weak pawn at d6, there's the, those artificial bringing the rook up and I think White's just, you know, sitting on a little bit of an advantage here for sure. Let's check in on board two. The roommate game? The roommate game. <laughs> well, this is a variation of the of the accelerated that Petrosian used to play with black and other people. This is this is, you know, marginally better for white. And uh, Michael has played this system in the past and, and um uh, who said? I think he played it against Gadir and and maybe uh, or Lenderman. It was Lenderman, and he got a decent game out of it. And Lenderman won on time in a position where yeah, Michael it was, was complex. Still in the game. That's right. And was yeah. It was and the that final came, round. That that came out of this opening. Oh, okay. Going back to uh, Kyron's game real quick here. Now this is. So black can think about playing queen f6 check and then taking on c6. And that's what he must be debating, right? But white's going to have this queen a4 move. So I think maybe black has to just take on c6. But is that going to be an advantage in the end game here? Sure, oh. it's an unbalanced endgame where, where I think black should be better. Um, so we're looking at pawn takes. Yeah, so he has to take that way, I think. And now I think white and queen a4 now doesn't do as much. Queen b6 just doesn't look good for white somehow, this position ruptured pawns you know maneuver is to work to do work by hand hmm. oh yeah maneuver <laughs> right there we go a little uh <clears throat> now it's man uber <laughs> <laughs> all right let's uh <clears throat> whoa Look at this game. I think Uber is an unfortunate word for a company, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> Why is that? Or it just has a what it implies. Has, 
Yeah, it's a German word for over, right? So. <laughs> yeah, Uber Alice and Uber Mensch and all that kind of stuff that you used to hear back in the day. Lyft sounds better, yeah, yeah. Lyft sounds better. I thought, like I'm not, yeah. And taxi is even a better choice. I agree. <laughs> yeah. And in the order of that, what you like, uh, it's, the, you know, the companies are failing. <laughs> right. <Taxi>. Of course. <laughs> for them, for sure. All right. Well, I mean, you know, I'm not sure that uh, who gets the last laugh in these situations. Here we go. Is there anything here for uh, for white? Well, Nicholas, Nicholas has yet. He's still a pawn down, and now the queens are getting exchanged. Yeah, but that's course, yeah. be a problem. I mean, white's chances were are better if the queens can stay on, right, Paul? I would think so, yeah. So, okay, so White is going to try to, this is this is quite well done. White can double on the D file now to pressure the D6 pawn. And uh, still it's gotta be better for Black. Nicholas has offered a draw. Oh, I bet he has, because he's like I'm yeah. Like, yeah, he's like a pawn down. <laughs> he's a pawn down, yeah. And Eric's not going to take it, of course. <laughs> and um, and he's well, declined. Be, yeah. It's been declined. Yeah. I love this. How Abel can give us these inside scoops about the. Oh drama. yeah, yeah. No, I love uh, announcing to the world when someone offers a draw. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. So let's move on. Yeah, let's take a look at this one here. So this is Chiron's game. You know, the comment <laughs> I pushed to in the chat, that was something really funny about the Queen's Gambit. Uh, <laughs> That's so right, yeah, that, right. Is that, you know, her opponent would offer her a draw, she would say no, and then he, the opponent would resign. Right. All right, I resign. No, it's like the next move. I mean, who does that? It's so funny. <laughs> so an interesting end game here is coming up. Which way are you taking back with the pawn? Yeah. I mean, you've got to take pawn. back with the pawn, I, I think. think so. I mean, yeah. It's possible taking back with the knight well, is good. Much, uh, eyelids, I think, well. Yeah, I, but the, taking back with the knight provides uh, more protection to h4. And that uh, can be a problem here for white, is the h4 pawn. I think maybe well, taking no, back with. We have an open g file, but I mean, it is true. Black has a bishop, so. Now, I, I think that taking back with the knight might have been, strangely, might have been a better move. Interesting. Okay. But um, now some of the static features favor black here. The pawn at h4 particularly is worrisome as a target for the bishop. Black's going to play g6, bishop e7. The g file means nothing here. Yeah. But yeah, white is solid true. right now. White is solid right now, so nothing. And white can still play f4 and knight f3 to, to, to cover. This is a long way from being a win for black, that's for sure. Oh, sure, yeah, absolutely. Let's uh, go back to board one. Because of a3 and b4 and maybe, maybe try to create a pass pawn on the queen side. Sure. So okay, what's going on here? A five has been played by Gadir. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is the, I see what's happened. So White has maneuvered the exchange on B3, but actually in a sense, it might not have been the right idea because with the possibility of taking on C3, if that 
night gets taken, then maybe the black pawn can it'll be close to the queening square. Let's put it that way. Yeah. But white needed to free the rook at h1, and maybe this was the way to do it. So it's still... Still a game, for sure. It's complicated here. I mean, black is... Black has some dynamic potential. I think white might need to stop black from playing pawn f4, which will send the white bishop out to nowhere. So maybe king e2? You don't want to trade on f5? Well, you can take on f5 and then maybe play pawn f4. That's another thing I was thinking about. Black can always try moves like b5. I, I don't know. Again, I'm speaking in ideas rather than specific moves because the players are the ones that are making the sort of the big decisions here and we're just kind of following along. But yeah, you could take on f5 and then maybe play pawn f4 or take on f5 and play king e2, but then rook e8 on the e file. I don't know. No, this is... Yeah, at least it's a game. That's it's quite. It's still definitely a game yeah. without. Black has also got the idea, of course, of playing Bishop G seven, and and trying to penetrate on the C file. So I'm just that's like, another that issue is, here. That Gadir is getting a game now. Yay! Yeah, it's getting a little. Yeah, but yeah. Well, it looks and great experience for Kirits. Absolutely. Oh, no, fantastic. All right, onward. Here is the uh, the end game between uh, Sartorio and Kyron Griffith. C5, uh, well, doesn't drop a pawn, so. Yeah, if black has an advantage here, it's microscopic. I mean, black has some reorganizing to do here in order to get to, and one thing is the rooks aren't connected. E5 is a good looking move. Check something. Oops. Yeah, maybe it's as simple as this. So let's see, it's white to move, and uh, what is black threatening here? Nothing. I think. Okay. Yeah. Well,. Black doesn't want to play c5, but if he doesn't, white might play c5. And c5 looks like a strong move for for white. You know, I, I agree with you, because if black, if bla I mean, I agree with you that black doesn't want to play c5, because then we'll maneuver our knight around to d5 or something, right? It'd be annoying. Yeah, and also the pawn's on the same color as the bishop, but right. maybe it might be necessary to do it to free the rook at some point. So yeah, that rook is just tied down defending that pawn. Well, black's ready for king e7 and rook uh, rook e8 or something, or rook d8. Uh-huh. I remember a long time ago you said that the h4 pawn might be a weakness for white. Yeah, it's, a, it's, sta it's still you there. Have, you can't get your rook away from defending it. You know, if you move your rook away, then bishop 3 might come in. Yeah, I think, I think you know, white black has some advantages here now two weak white pawns on e4 and h4 it's not yet a win you know mm -hmm. um, necessarily but um black is kind of creeping into position here yeah and white's gonna have to play very accurately to hold this it's possible though i think and here moves so you shall we move on <clears throat> sure there, there. I'm looking. 
It seems like all these games are lasting let's, longer than. Let's take a look at this one. We have not. Uh, we haven't checked in on this one yet. This is uh, Christian Clemens against uh, Nicholas Boldy. Oh, okay. So Christian's Christian's mad <laughs> from the last. This is redemption. This is redemption. Yeah. Well, Lucy. Yeah. I mean, this looks very bad for Black. Queen H7 check, knight takes rook, knight takes bishop. <clears throat> oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like a strong attack that white has. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, Christian's mad, I think, after. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Fired up from losing. Yeah. It can, losing a game can, uh, like that can be, can be, um, a stimulus to, um, Wow, Limelight is on the attack. Speaking of attacks, here's another attack here. And this is uh, two national masters, Arun Dixit and Thomas Mazur. I guess Thomas Mazur needs to contact chess.com so he can get the NM. <laughs> he does. Not sure that'll do it. Oh, look, someone it, it has to leave us. Oh, that's terrible. Bad. That is terrible. Oh, good night. You don't want to make your mom all, mad. All I'll, say to, even... all I'll say to the mom <laughs> is that there are worse things to be doing at this time of night <laughs> than watching chess. <laughs> uh, but maybe, now, do yeah. we know V Chess Master? I uh, do not. Well, it might, maybe. might be a 75 year old chess player. Is <laughs> mom screaming well, at him? If your mom, if your mom is still yelling at you and you're 75, that could be embarrassing, huh? That, could, that, could, that, could not, that cannot be good. So, uh, what is? how does White win this? Oh, if White can win this. Server busy. Hey, I think that's someone that played in your arena. It's a well. Uh, not today, but he's played in the, uh, he's played in other events. Okay. Cool. Well, glad you're and here. It is a scholastic player. Okay. Yeah. So King G7, where's the mate? <laughs> Rick is saying mama's boy at 75. That would be, that would be exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, can we do a smothered maid or something? I guess we can't. Too much space. Bad. Well, this is a very exciting game. I don't see a clear win for white. Um, no. King g7, knight e6, king takes f7. It's true you've got a discovered check, but where does where do you go with your discovered check? That's right. You can't get onto the queen. I was thinking King G7, Queen D7. And that actually looks kind of strong. Oh, the someone's asking about the penguin attack. Sorry, that looks kind of dumb. A3, knight, A4, knight, A3 looks dumb. <laughs> And that's coming uh, from uh, one of the top <laughs> chess universities in the country. So uh, <laughs> sorry, that's my, my quick analysis there. That, was, that uh, I don't know. Love I that mean, analysis. Carlson, <laughs> Carlson that has dumb. played f6 and king f7 against grandmasters. And yeah, beaten. I think he's trying to show that he can win no matter what he plays. I think that's <laughs> well, what that I think that uh, I think that almost anything goes in the opening. And um, in, in a sense, it does. And as long as you're not hanging pieces and playing completely unsoundly, especially white can get away with so much in the opening. Um, and it's one thing that white players try to do sometimes is just play absurd stuff and, um, and, and then they don't get punished for it because of that first move thing. Right. So, yeah, but that's funny. I, I like that A4, knight A3, B3, you like and you're creating a little igloo for yourself. Is that is that kind of the idea? Or maybe it looks like a penguin. Yeah. In the igloo. 
Yeah, the, the right, yeah. The knight is like a penguin in the igloo or something. <laughs> Gonna go back yeah. to uh, board one here. And see yeah, what this was an exciting game, God years. So this white bishop is finding it difficult to find a home. Right. And, and shoots all the way out to A7. It's interesting how black is sort of trying to make white's pieces look bad. And, and it's quite nice. So. And Karim's down to five minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, what happens if rook c2 here, maybe? I think black has got some possibilities. He plays king f7, that gets rid of all the, brings the king towards the center and gets rid of any kind of knight e7 possibility. Black sits for a minute with this move. And I like it, you yeah, know, strong, obviously. King comes into the middle. Yeah, I mean, black's managed to put all of his pieces on ideal squares, whereas white still has a rook on h1, not doing anything, so. Yeah, and there's these cross pins like bishop h6 and bishop d4 and pressure on b2, and it's like magic almost how black has kind of um, sprung this on white. So what about g4? Let's try to get rid of uh, let's try to get rid of this knight on f5. It really is annoying. It is annoying. And remember, it used to be on e8. So I mean, I think Black might try bishop h6 on g4. Uh -huh. uh, well, we'll find out. Paul. We're gonna find out. Yeah, I mean, White's finding this pressure a lot, and but I have a feeling bishop h. Well, then f4. Bishop h6, f4. So that's, uh, I'm still not seeing it. White needs a move like g4 to get to get some freedom here. And this is exactly yeah. what he needs. Yep. And black just drops back. Now I'm wondering, Paul, does white play like h4 to make his work look smart? <laughs> Maybe not immediately, but because of the, you have a problem on d5, but... Well, what about knight b4 here? That looked good to me. Sort of takes away the c2. Yeah. Blindfold blitz. Somebody says I should do blindfold blitz. Well, didn't you bring really? it? Oh, not blindfold uh, blitz. So. Just blindfold. <laughs> simul. I could. I I once played three games blindfold simultaneously and won wow. all three. That's very good. I'm so proud of myself. So he plays knight b4. You called it. Good job. Yeah, how do, they get, how's, uh, how do we hang on to the uh, d6 pawn? Well, the b2 pawn is hanging. That's so. true. That's true. With tactics coming up here, we want to be careful especially when we have three minutes and the grandmaster has 23 yeah, minutes that's gonna be uh tough yeah mm -hmm. and again this the the unstable white bishop at a7 is really bothering me mm. i mean i'm almost taking it personally abel <laughs> that bad really that bad like an insult yeah bishop e3 Rook d1. Finally, the rook gets into the game. Yay. Go, rook. And uh, Kirit under three minutes. That is going to be a challenge. Got to be a tough game here. Knight c, knight c8 might be the funny looking move here. Knight c8, bishop e3, rook takes e3. So what? The, it's just an exchange of pieces. Okay, knight c8, bishop e3. Hmm. Oh my gosh, Paul, you called the grandmaster move. The guru. 
Light C8 looks nice, and for sure. And What's the move after bishop? Around. The move after bishop e3 though is is what is something. Maybe bishop e5, just trying to sort of. But then White will just play maybe h3. Uh, Black's the, trying to find a way in here. Uh, the chat is suggesting bishop d4. D4. D4, bishop d4. That's what the chat says, so what do you think? And then if rook, uh, then if bishop h6. Attacking the rook, yeah, that's annoying, but it's not the end of the world. We could play rook b3. How are you going to hold on and to then rook d4 check maybe rook c2 check boy there's a lot of complicated rook stuff c2 there check. oh that is exciting yeah because if knight takes c2 yeah, takes then back and then and then does yep. queening square is protected black is playing sure. with a lot of different ideas here and that and that that means white has to be very careful here okay, he's only got a minute and a half now mm. What's, uh, he's trying to decide between bishop d4 and bishop e3. It looks to me right now like bishop e3 is a safer move, but I could be wrong. I, th I I'm going for bishop e3 as being the right move here. And I think, I think the time is just going to be a problem. I think bishop d4, bishop h6 is, is. Oh, bishop okay, D we're gonna see. Look, whammo. Hey, Keaton. Hey, hey guys. How's it going? Oh, wow, wow yeah. what, what a crew. And, we and have now today, rookie, rookie <laughs> two check and rook c two check. So here we have international master Keaton Cura. Thank you for Hi, joining Keaton. us. Hey, Paul. Hey, Alexi. So the, he played rook. C this is what uh, I've been calling this, but White's got king b three. And Keith, Very. Alexi was singing your praises earlier. Uh, well, that's very generous of her. I think <laughs> Alexi's too generous. And now Black has the past H pawn. Watch what happens here. Something like Rook F2, Rook D3, Bishop moves, and then H5. I don't know. This game sounds interesting. I've got to get on it. Yeah. Did you ever play in a chess tournament at the Mechanics, Keaton? You know, I, I was thinking about that. I don't think I have. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll need to do that sometime. It's on I my list. I thought you had, but I, I guess I'm wrong. That's what I was talking about with um, Abel in our last interview. I was thinking maybe one of the Berkeley Internationals was held there, but I don't think it was. Yeah, I think it was, it was a different location. If it was called the Berkeley Internationals, <laughs> probably, 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 probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I I got a I got a game to show you before uh, we ask you about a few things. Look at this end game between uh, Kyron Griffith, who's black. Oh, Kyron's playing. Yeah, and uh, oh, Kyron's one of my good friends. Yeah, yeah, and uh, William Sartorio. Here, uh, so what what's the website? Uh, Twitch TV slash Mechanics Chess. Oh, so you mean you're on the Zoom, but you can't see it yet? Okay. Well, he's not on Twitch. He's got to be on, on Twitch. Twitch. I'm, I'm, I'm logging on. Yeah. All right. Twitch is like the... N n now the I have the 30-second uh, ad, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Subscribe. You got Buffalo Wild Wings, or what is it today? Uh, Taco Bell. Taco Bell. Oh, my God. That, that sounds... It, that sounds it knows right chess now. players are hungry. Yeah. <laughs> If White is drawing this, it's go by the skin of his teeth. Uh, it's, he's definitely let's worse see, here. Let's see. Oh, we're getting a raid. Thanks, Josh Friedel. Hey, for the Josh. Next. Thank you, Josh Friedel. Sending yeah. us players. Uh, you are watching the Tuesday Night Marathon here at the Mechanics yeah. Institute. This is round four of eight of our Tuesday Night Marathon, game in 35 plus two. And we're on the tail end. We're watching Kyron Griffith as black. Trying to navigate the bishop versus knight endgame against uh, William Sartorio. 
Well, that move he just played, Bishop d6, was a really good move since Black can't, since White can't make that trade. So what Black's going to get now is the e5 square, and I think that should just about clinch it. I think you're right. And uh, as we sort of peered into our crystal ball from a long time ago, White lost the pawn on h4 and to the black bishop, probably. And we've, uh, you know, seen what happens over and over and over again with the master sort of looking far into the future and, and uh, visualizing an outcome. And this is kind oh, of- Oh yeah, I mean, Kyron's got. a real professional. He's, he's got uh, these kinds of end game situations down. Yeah, he seems to take players into the deep waters of the end game and then uh, sinks his teeth <laughs> into well, them once he's there. Seen this over and over and over again. Him winning end games uh, continuously, and it's really the thing that separates all the um, all the twenty three hundred plus players from the rest from the people below. Yeah, absolutely, watching. professional yeah. approach. Yeah. And Keaton, tell us about this. Uh, you got a class. You're working with uh, National Master Derek Wu. Yeah, that's right. Um, so, yeah, Derek and I are offering uh, a class together. It's probably going to meet for two hours a week, looking for, you know, strong, motivated uh, students. And we'll, we'll teach them over um, Skype or Zoom. The classes will be recorded. Um, and given to them so that they can go back and watch and review later also. So yeah, we're, we're real excited for that. And uh, Keaton's one of the most popular top coaches, uh, real pro. Uh, Thank you so much. And can they, uh, can I put your email in the uh, Twitch Absolutely. chat? Absolutely, that, that'd be wonderful. So um, yeah, feel free to yeah, email Yeah, Kira at gmail.com. That is it. So uh, hit him up if uh, you want to get in on uh, some classes, especially working with Derek. Uh, Derek's been fun. We've had him at the Mechanics Institute doing guest uh, uh, streaming. Uh, yeah, he's doing a great job with his streaming. He's really taking off. Yeah, yeah. He's going uh, next level. So Guseyanov has uh, closed the show. Oh, and, wow. And won against uh, Kirit. Here's the final position. Which uh, match is this? This is uh, Gadir Guseyanov, uh, GM, against uh, Kirit. I I'm just wondering, though, like, is it like a tournament? Or it's, yeah, um, this is yeah. round four of our Tuesday Night Marathon. It says oh, round you have three Guseyanov up there. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It says round three, but it's That's actually round four. That's where it needs four. to be updated. It is round four. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah let me do that now. Sure, Earlier. Man. Holy cow. got to fix that. Wow, that's very impressive. Get that. Yeah, these are these are this is a a, tr a tournament Keaton that started in 1972, um, and has been ongoing uh, through 2020. So it, it's the uh, amazing, an incredible tournament um, that originally started out as a 12 rounder with the Germans one, and everything. One else. game a week. Yeah. One game a week. It still has, um, uh, we were doing it before the pandemic. It was one game a week um, at the club. And um, well, I think those kinds players. of tournaments work especially well for online. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, so now we do two games uh, a night. And uh, it's been amazing. Like, you know, all our regulars have come back and they're, they're playing with us on Tuesday night and they're interacting in the chat. And it's, it's, it's been really nice to have that. And now they're joined by grandmasters sometimes, like, um, like Lenderman's uh, played it. Busunev and Lenderman. And um, uh, who else has been playing? We've had Patrick Wolf play. Well, the, these GMs are addicted to chess, and they don't have anywhere to play. <laughs> so, of course, they're coming on. <laughs> Let's and then we have Kyron. Um, Kyron plays regularly, um, and also um, Elliot Winslow. Right. 
So let's. To... Well, yeah, Tyron's been playing real regularly. The mechanics for years, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, and in our team matches. What a thing! He's been a fantastic uh, addition to the club. I mean, before the pandemic started, um, you know, um, he came in around the same time you did, Abel, right? Yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. He came like a few um, months after. I remember yeah. his first email to me. He said, "Hey, I just came to the city." Right. You know. And he's just been one of the star players. Oh yeah, well, Kyron's an amazing guy, and yeah, real professional player, really strong. Where was he moving from, Abel? Uh, New York, I think he was coming oh, from wow. New York. Yeah. So he he's originally from San Diego. Right. Um, although we didn't really overlap too much, I think he kind of was on his way out when I got here. <laughs> and uh, then, yeah, he went to college in New York, lived in New York for a few years, I think, before moving out to the Bay Area. Do you, uh, what about Cyrus? Do you hang out with him or, or you know? Uh, well, we haven't been hanging out too much um, <laughs> recently, but, um, but yeah, he's, he's a good friend of mine. I've been over to his house uh, many times, had a lot of a lot of great meals there, a lot of real interesting conversations. How about sure. that? Yeah. Oh. Look at that. Nice little shot, Bishop H6 yeah, check. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Black, oh wow. makes it, Black makes it worse for himself. And uh, Arun Dixit right. picks up that win. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, I actually played him in the, uh, in the Bay Area one time when I came for a tournament. Real strong, underrated kid. Yeah. What yeah. tournament was that? It was like a, a four round uh, weekend tournament. It didn't end up being terribly strong. I think Conrad Holt and I were the only titled players. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, but I played a ruin in the second round and he almost beat me. He played a really good game. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, he played the Tuesday Night Marathon live at Mechanics uh, right. six, yeah, I mean, like a year ago. And uh, the family traveled from Sacramento. Oh, wow. wow! To play like they played the full, you know, eight round or whatever, and dedication. Uh, they made the trip every Tuesday. Yeah, it was fantastic. This might have been a Leningrad Dutch, maybe. So white is up a pawn, but not really. No, this wasn't. Uh, this was not a Leningrad Dutch from the opening. Remember, it was a Sicilian. Oh yeah, yeah, this was, was uh, this is that's right. Buying. Yeah, and now Michael Walder is another Southern California um, uh, transplant up here, but from a long ago. Um, yeah, I've heard the name. He's a he's a was a quite a strong twenty three fifty player back in the day. Um, still plays a good game of chess and is capable of beating anybody. Yeah, we can day. see that. Looks like he's playing well this game. You know, um, you, it's interesting you mentioned Conrad Holt. I've watched him play, and I'm very impressed by Conrad Holt. Oh, he's a uh, genius. Hey, I hold mean, on. I, hold, hold, hold on. He's also a UT Dallas graduate. Another UT right. Dallas. <laughs> but, I mean, I just get the impression that, that if he had not if he had stuck to chess, um, that, that maybe he would have gone quite far in chess. Oh, I totally agree. I don't yeah. know why he didn't, honestly. Well, I don't either. Maybe, maybe but he wanted money. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> That'll ruin it. <laughs> but what a, he's a superbly talented chess player. Absolutely. Obviously. Absolutely. Yeah. I think I saw he was playing in that online qualifier to get a spot in the U.S. championship. Didn't yeah, he, he, he lost out. And I'm trying to. Well, he doesn't play chess enough, yeah. probably. Yeah. Well, he uh, he's played the U.S. Championship before. That's yeah. right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he was he was definitely in that online qualifier that chess. dot com. King, did you try to do that? That online qualifier? Oh, a long, long, long time ago. In fact, I actually played at Dr. Redmond's house. That was when I was at UTD. No, no, I meant this latest online qualifier to. Um, no, I didn't play the latest sure. one. No, I remember when you played at Dr. Redmond's house. Oh, yeah, you were there, weren't you? I was there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, there's such reduced material in this game that White does have some slim chances 
by going maybe after the F pawn. And, and um, I don't know. I mean, I'm just trying to find some redemption for white here. So you know what I've trained myself to look at in these kinds of positions? It, just in case it comes down to it, black does have the right color bishop for his A pawn. <laughs> That's good thinking. Because <laughs> you, you never know. <laughs> yeah. Long-term no, thinking. Yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah long-term thinking is, is, is absolutely the key. Um, and... Uh, Wow, look at it. Compared to this game, there's you know, so many pieces still on the board with uh, Elliot Winslow and Mike Walder. Yeah. Oh, and these guys are getting into time pressure. Yeah, and Mike Walder again. Well, I like Mike's game. I mean, you you, you like Black's game here, of I hate course. his time, but yeah. He's active, yeah. Yeah. So when is your... Uh, when is your class starting, Keaton, with Derek? Is that next week? Or? We'll, we'll probably start in early January. Okay. So what we like to do is kind of, you know, get some people signed up, start kind of communicating with some people who are interested. Start preparing. And then we kind of reach out and see what works for them. Sure. Because you, usually approach. we have about 10 people per class. So. Nice. Yeah, so kind of see what works for everyone and then establish like a couple of regular times. Is this the first time you're going to be working with Derek, collaborating? Or? Yes, on, on something like this, yeah. So, yeah, should should be great. I think we, we both um, bring some some unique uh, things to the table. So very excited to work together on very that. Very cool, very cool. So, Keaton, do you think that the uh, Black King is going to try to go to d4 and c3? Absolutely. Gobble up those queenside pawns. But Black is distracting White with the h pawn first. And White's doing the right thing by, by using the knight to try to attack the Black pawns from behind. That's typical strategy. Maybe, maybe knight g4 here? Yeah, yeah, I think that's the best move. Well, it think, just but then King E six even, and 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 you're just sort of putting off the inevitable. Well, that's what you're trying to do, Paul. Put off. The <laughs> no, you're trying to find an active defense. <laughs> I have a I feeling he could. Okay, he plays a conservative. I have a feeling he could have gotten away with King D four there. I think you're right, but I think White should have gone uh, the other way with the knight to F seven and to D eight or something like that. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah, just I don't. Yeah, here comes f five. This is this is so thematic. It's ridiculous. <laughs> T four. Thematic. It's ridiculous. I yeah. like that. Yeah, I think black has just enough pawns here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think white needed to try something completely crazy, like going going after the c pawn or something. I don't know if it would have worked. Probably not. Well, yeah, if he somehow could have gotten that C pawn, then all he'd have to do is sack the knight for the A pawn, and he could make a draw. That's right. Yes, yes. But, of course, you know, uh, yeah, you know I'm that just... expression from, I think Tarash said, you know, before the end game, the gods have placed the middle game. <laughs> you know, oh, interesting. I, that knight is going to sort of run out of squares, is my opinion. It's going to run but, out of useful things to do. But uh, Elliot Winslow has paraphrased that to, you know, where he says, you know, the gods have placed the end game after the middle game, you know, because that's where the <laughs> that's where he's finding he's the older players and the more experienced players are winning their their games or in the absolute stage of the game. Yeah. Yeah, well, this absolutely. is now looking. Yeah, I think Black's got this and one. And it's, it's the part of the game that suffers the most for today's strongest young players because they Definitely. are absolute magicians at openings and at tactics and calculation. But some sometimes they lack a little bit of the, you know, experience that really helps in the end game. So... White would like to take the, the pawn on c6 and then sack his knight for the pawn on a5. Can he do it? Is there a, is there a way to do it?
probably well knight b7 is going to be a nice looking move yeah but yeah then i guess bishop up. c7 I mean, right play bishop c7 right i mean i don't i don't see I guess you're coming back to c5 to defend your pawn or something? I don't know. I mean, you've got... Oof. The knight can do gonna everything be able to by grab itself. The ace pawn, but okay, see, Bishop b6, away. now you can't even come to c, c5 to defend your pawn. So, I don't know. And if c5, then bishop c7? Yeah, I guess that's his plan. You know, Kyron calculates this stuff very quickly, I found. Uh, well, his I mean, end game. He's very confident. He's a, a fit player. You're going to be taking the B pawn, so I don't know how much there is really to calculate. If you get the, the B pawn, aren't you just winning? Well, I'd be racking my brains trying to find the, the right, you know, exact <laughs> sequence. I think uh, Tom Mazur is saying, hey, Paul, did I hear you say older players? <laughs> uh, I saw one interesting try for white, if if you want to take a quick look. Um, instead of taking on h4, he could have maybe tried knight d6, since the bishop can't, takes, uh, can't take. And then my, my idea is to meet king takes b3 with um, knight b5 to try, oh, to, wow. to try to tempo the bishop. And when the bishop moves, you get knight d4 and you win the c6 pawn. But... Uh, or I guess now that the game's over, we can take a quick look. Yeah, take a go run back here. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, Tom, I'm joining you in, in the old timers club. How, how far do you want um, me to go back? Uh, right here, actually. Yeah. So okay. my, my idea was knight d6. And then um, so black would play king takes b3 and then knight b5. So can the you take, we have to visualize it. We wait have, a minute, though. But if knight b5, can I take the knight on that's, b5? That, that's the issue. Yeah, take the knight on b5. Take. And then after a takes, um, whenever I play b6, you can always play bishop d8. Yes, yes. Because any move other than bishop d8 and white wins, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So black can just happily play pawn a4 and if b6, wow. bishop d8. I thought it was at least an interesting try, but I'm sure Kyron would have seen that. Well, he's in the chat. Yeah, he's yeah. in the chat. <laughs> he's, uh, he's, he's surprised oh, to see you. Yeah. He's surprised to see you. What's up, Kyron? Nice game. Nice yeah, game. you've yeah. been playing great chess, Kyron. The, the first day last <laughs> week, you were, I think, having some trouble. but We caught him on a good day. So good win. And look at, look at this ending of the Elliott Winslow game. Uh, oh, is it over? With this move right there. Oh my gosh. That's nice beautiful. move. Yeah. Look at that. That's nice a tactic right out of the the tactic books. Right out of the tactic. And Judith, are uh do we have more games going? Because <laughs> I only pulled up the top board, so checking in, but uh this is around the witching time when all the games <laughs> are, are done. If king h6, queen h4, mate. Yeah. And uh, Tom Mazur's in the chat saying uh, he had a 69-year experience edge on his opponent and <laughs> wondering if that's a mechanic. Wow. Record. And uh, Kyron's asking that you got to jump in on this. And on yeah, the, the I'd like to. When, when does the next one start? Uh, the next one will start in January. Oh, okay. Maybe I can. Yeah. So Tuesday, uh, Tuesday nights. Oh, that'd yeah, be that'd be great. Fun. All right. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Actually, funny thing, uh, Paul was talking about jumping in. Oh, yeah, marathon. you should. Maybe you could have... Uh, well, uh, I can't do the commentary. That's fine. So we got Alexi Sam here. Sam Shanklin. As I said, I'll get Sam to... Uh, I'll get Sam to uh, jump in, and then we'll just Rip focus us on your game exclusively. <laughs> so, any game still going, Judith? <laughs> Elliot says, uh, if there is a 2021. And Elliot raises a good point. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you guys. Good game. Nice shot, Elliot, uh, on that yeah, last Bishop one. Bishop H6 is a monster move. And we got two more games going. Who are the two games? Uh, I can pull those, pull it up. Board 10 and board 23. 10 and 23? Yeah. All right, let's see. Is it this one? We'll see. 
You live in San Diego, Keaton. Yes. Nice town, beautiful weather. I can't can't disagree with you there. Yeah. <laughs> it was 77 yeah. today. Just the most perfect weather in the country, I think. Or at least I, that's what I've seen. I, I think it is, too. Yeah. This should be ending soon here. Well, uh, we've got half the board cut off, so. Oh, is that right? Oh, shoot. Well, that's not going to cut it. It seems like an important part of the board, too. <laughs> there are times that I'd rather not look at it myself. <laughs> and the funny thing is, it's the board, uh, all the actions on the other side, of course. Whatever is happening to White's King doesn't look uh, it's, it's not like a pretty, great deal, yeah, it's though. Not right, pretty. except for there's probably a queen over there defending everything. Oh, there we go on the H5. Oh, is. they just sacked on G5. <laughs> Wow, a there queen. It is. Yikes. Or more like a queen trap. And, done. Right? and that's uh, Chelsea Zhu uh, taking down Kevin Yanofsky. No, oh, she's a strong player. Wow. All right. And I think. Uh, Players live by the. One more game left. Skin of their teeth. Skin of their yeah. teeth. What a, what a round. Yeah. What a round. Uh, next week should be uh, pretty interesting because I think we're going to have Elliot Winslow with a four. Gadir is going to have four points. Uh, Eric Hahn defeated Nicholas Wing. He'll have four. Uh, Kyron at three and a half. He only has a half point because he requests he had a first round half point buy. So maybe he'll play up against the lowest four. Uh, yeah. Which uh, in this case would be uh, Eric uh, Eric Hahn, and then probably Elliot against Gadir in a rematch. Wow! Well, they drew. Well, they played actually. three times. They, Elliot drew a really nice game against Gadir. Nice. Where he was um, probably a little better. He also actually. lost a game to Gadir, but Elliot's game is uh, he he plays a lot now and um, uh, has played some good chess. Good. And as, yeah. soon, as soon as uh, all the games end, uh, we will be updating the uh, the standings and uh, have that up, and then we'll take a we'll take a look at that. So, do you, Keaton? Do you have a designated day off in terms of your coaching? Do you have one day where you say, "I'm not going to"? Well, so, so sometimes every day kind of feels like a day off, you know, when you. Uh, <laughs> Co coach professionally but um you, usually on weekends like on saturday it's uh i try not to have lessons most of the time and you're telling me you live uh pretty close to the water so you get yeah the, you get was actually there today uh, enormous waves i think there were about 12 foot waves today wow. did you jump wow. in there do some surfing mm -hmm. or uh, no, I, I have some good friends who surf, but I, I'm actually, e even though I did manage the uh, San Diego surfers, I'm actually not a surfer myself. <laughs> yeah, but the name sounds great. Yeah, I'm it works, right? <laughs> I'm a drowner. You know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, so did you play in the, uh, the States Cup? That's been going on. Yes, I did. Um, we had a really good team that Robert Schlachtenko did an outstanding job of managing. Yeah. Um, wow. That, uh, given his age, he played the cadet at the mechanics online. The U.S. Oh cadet. yeah, he's he's a great player, and yeah, he did a he played on the team too, and did a great job of managing the team. The whole thing was really his idea. Nice. Um, Is that right? Wow. So yeah, it was it was fun uh, playing in the States Cup. I actually played against you guys. The Again. Northern California, yeah, we yeah. actually didn't. Uh, yeah, we we didn't uh, manage the team this year. Actually, the the players, uh, Josiah Stearman, I think. Oh was, yeah, you're right. Josiah was the manager. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's funny how the the kids took control, managing. Uh, oh yeah, some of these did, teams. did a great job. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's over, right? I think someone in the chat was saying Washington. Yeah, they, it's but, over. Yeah. But Elliot, what what's with this Elliot's car wreck? So it's talking about his car wrecking. He wrecked his car when uh, he's not supposed to be driving. It says the car wreck <laughs> didn't help either. <laughs> Did you wreck My, your car? Uh, Were you you're supposed to be sheltering in place? Not understanding it. <laughs> and all the games are done. Someone rammed into his parked car. 
Oh no! Oh, I hope geez. he wasn't. Oh jeez! <laughs> Hopefully he wasn't sleeping in the car while he was parked. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, well, you know one thing, Keaton. Um, I'll say is that it's really this whole year has been. There's a lot of people like Kyron who I think probably would be close to international master if not already an international master. Um, oh yeah, Kyron's think- easily I am strength. Um, Although I don't know that he would necessarily get I am playing in the Bay Area just because there are so many underrated kids there. Right, right. It's kind of like playing in San Diego. But I mean, yeah, if Kyron played in, in Europe for a summer or something, he'd definitely make I am. But, but what I'm saying is the opportunity is not there now. And I know. So yeah, the, unfortunate for sure. Yeah. And the updated... Uh, Standings are up, and indeed, the top three with perfect scores are Gadir Guseyanov, Elliot Winslow, and Eric Hahn. And Kyron Griffith is the sole player at three and a half. Standings are there. So uh, you can go check that out, and uh, we should have some dynamite games uh, for next week. And, uh, I'm, I'm, all, I'm always interested in going to Europe and playing tournaments. There you go. I think uh, you may have a travel buddy. Uh, always down. Well, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be our first rodeo. We played we played tournaments together in Europe before. Fantastic, fantastic. Is that right? You and Kyra? Yeah, I think that was maybe like 2016, 2015, 2016. Oh, oh wow. Like that that. Long ago. We, we played in Beale and in uh, Budapest. Nice. Yeah, nice. yeah, I had a lot of fun. Great time. Well, if you ever play in uh, Budapest, uh, you got to ask Judith because she's got a house over there. That that you, <laughs> she, she, Oh yeah, a, actually, I've talked to Judith about that. Yeah, that would be. <laughs> right, uh, yeah. It's like w- a chess would be house. Incredibly helpful. Yeah, <laughs> like, a, like a safe house. It's a chess house. <laughs> so, well, Keaton, thanks for uh, coming on and joining yeah. us. And. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for having me. And uh, shoot him an email uh, if you want to take his course along with uh, Derek Wu. Please do. It would be great. And, uh, and then we'll give you a little shout out in the, the newsletter uh, coming up. Okay, and, thank you. And thank you that, guys so and much. Really that appreciate information. that. And Alexi and Paul, thanks for joining. And uh, let's, uh, let's do it Bye, again next Alexi. week. Let's do it again next week. Are we going to raid? We're going to raid, raid someone. Let's see All right. who's going to be the lucky. Uh, this is the highlight of my evening. Chess commentary. Nah. Let's go raid somebody. Because <laughs> then it's like it's like you're spinning the wheel, right? Uh, thanks, Kyron, for uh, thanks, Karen. Thanks, following Lisa. the commentary. Can we raid your homeboy, Danya? Oh, we could. He, um, he's giving us some love. Is he on? Let's see here. Oh, and there's the chat suggesting Narodinsky as well. Oh, yeah, why not? Let's do that. All right. We're going to do that. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. And uh, thanks for coming on. We will see everyone uh, next, actually, uh, Friday on uh, our next Mechanics uh, Social. And uh, we will be back next Tuesday for rounds five and six of the Tuesday Night Marathon. Thanks, everyone. All right. Good night. Good night. All right. Good night, guys. Thanks for having me. Absolutely.